Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the City of Delray Beach's regular City Commission meeting scheduled for Tuesday, February 7th, 2023 at 4 p.m. Please call the roll. Mr. Frankel. Present. Ms. Cassell. Here. Mr. Boylston. Present. Ms. Johnson. Present. Mayor Petrolia. Here. Let's stand for the pledge, please. So we're at the agenda approval. Any changes, deletions, or substitutions? Alice, may I just yep. ask to, excuse me for one second, yep. 6E, and then there's a, I believe there's an item that I had a question about under 6K1, which is the pharmacy. Okay. 6E becomes uh, 7AA. 6K1 will be 7BB. Thank you. What was and the last one? Six what? The last one, 6BB. Uh, I'm sorry, 6K1. Okay. 7BB. Right. And I'm going to ask for 6I to come off just to um, explain. I want to just make that public. It has to do with the county program for um, <clears throat> some uh, assistance to lower income households for water. So let's do that 7CC. Anything and I else? Have, I have. Oh, oh yes, go right ahead. Mm -hmm. okay. I would like to make a correction to um, the record okay. on presentation 4A. Its recommendation should not be a motion to present, but just a presentation. What? If it's a motion, then we have to do a vote, do we not? Okay, recommendation under the recommendation having motion removed. 7A. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Someone ask. 7A. And then on six, two of them. Instead of motions, I'm six dot G. Mm -hmm. dot. I'd like to pull it for discussion. Okay. And six D. Which ones were that, Commissioner? Six G is seven D D now. And six dot H dot. Seven D D. Mm-hmm. It's going to be seven. D -D. H. What was it? H. Six dot H. Dot. Seven EE. Mm -hmm. oh, See you guys tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> she did six H, and what was after six H? Six H. Okay. Was there another one? No. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anything and else? Yes. Six dot L dot one, and six dot L dot two, and six dot L dot three. Okay. Seven FF. It can be as easy as someone G -G. being able to. Get it to 7 us. 7HH. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's practically the entire <laughs> consent <laughs> agenda. All right, I'll unchain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Call the roll, please. Ms. Cassell. Yes. Mr. Bolston. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mayor Petrolia. Yes. Mr. Frankel. I'm going to say no just to. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Spice it up. Yeah, right. All right, so we're at presentation 7A. We have uh, Missy Barletta is going to be coming up. No? Uh, got fast. 7A of 4A. Okay. And Missy. Oh, I'm sorry. 4, 4A. Mm -hmm. Correction. We knew what you meant. <coughs> Good afternoon. Dot Bass Human Resources. I am honored to be here this afternoon to introduce Andrew Haynes as our 2022 Employee of the Year. His selection. <laughs> his selection was announced and celebrated at a ceremony on January 26th, but we are here today to officially recognize him and present him with his trophy. And Missy, I believe you have some kind words to say. I have a minimal amount of kind words to say, and that's because I'm going to cry. <laughs> I always do. But Andrew, since I started here, Andrew has been a rock in our department. He is part of what I like to call the MacGyver Squad, which is our building maintenance squad. If there's a problem or something that is broken and no one else can fix it, these guys can fix it. Mm -hmm. um, 
From the beginning of my time here, one of the very first things that we did was put in the Chicago brick patio at the Historic Society. <laughs> we did it on a weekend. And I brought my teenage son to work on that with the guys because there were not enough people to get the work done. Andrew was the most loving, patient person. My son can do brick paver patios now, if anybody's looking. <laughs> but I just would like to say that he's one of our, our rocks in our department, and I am so proud for him to be the employee of the year. Well, make sure that you tell everybody why he's the employee of the year. Oh, that's right. Dot didn't say so that. So important. So among the other things that he does in every day in a loving and supportive way, when he was um, not this year at the Christmas tree build, but the year before, he came across a gentleman who had passed out on the ground and was in a very bad way. Andrew gave him CPR and stayed with him until the emergency management um, team was able to get there and actually save the gentleman's life. And mm -hmm. <laughs> I told you, if it's broken, he can fix it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'd like to introduce Andrew. If you want to say. Andrew. He's also shy. He won't cry, but he's also <laughs> shy. Yeah. So, Andrew, on behalf of the City Commission, all of the city, um, your city co-workers, we present you with this plaque that I think you've already seen for Employee of the Year. We have here a plaque for your wall for Employee of the Year, and also, probably the best thing, Sorry, Missy, but this 24 hours of paid time off. Isn't that great? Yeah. Woo! Thank you all. The spring break, here we come. <laughs> here we go. And if you want to have your wife come up for <laughs> Mrs. Haynes is here for her su support, too. And what is his name? Andrew, Ari. And Ari. And oh, okay. All of our fantastic. <laughs> There you go, great picture. And it's, it's my sister Lucy, <laughs> Andrea, my son Andrew, my grandbaby, Ari, my wife, Vanikia. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> no, it's number two. Oh. <laughs> Thank you all. Congratulations, Andrew. Well deserved. Okay, moving on to 4B. Are we doing the pedestrian safety proclamation? Are we reading it? Okay, so what we have is a pedestrian safety proclamation. I'm going to read it into the record. Whereas residents have the opportunity to experience the pleasure of walking as a source of health and exercise as well as transportation. And whereas in 2020, Florida, Florida stat, statistics show 716 people were killed walking on the roads and streets. And in 2021, the death toll reached 899 people. And whereas the ad, to address the serious problem, Drivers and pedestrians must work together to demonstrate safe behaviors on the road, helping to protect themselves and those around them. And whereas in, on Florida's busy roadways, pedestrians are urged to always remain alert and make proper use of pedestrian crossings. And whereas the Florida Highway Patrol and public safety partners across the state are joining forces to remind drivers and pedestrians that sa staying safe on Florida's roadways is a shared responsibility. Now, therefore, I, Shelley Petrolia, Mayor of the City of Delray Beach, do hereby proclaim February 7th, 2023, as Pedestrian Safety Day in the City of Delray Beach and urge all citizens to ex exercise pedestrian and motor safety uh, precautions. And thank you very much. We are putting this in as our proclamation, and we thank you all for being here 
to represent um, those that are working towards a safer pedestrian and vehicle uh, you know, relationships on our roads. Did you want to say something? Well, I just wanted to mention that uh, Mr. Montre Bennett, Bennett brought this forward um, because of, um, he lost his son to a, a pedestrian incident. And, um, and I want to say thank you for bringing it forward. And, um, and hopefully um, this makes its way through the community and makes uh, not only Delray Beach safer for everybody, but specifically for all of our children. Um, so thank you. Uh, I know you put a lot of work into this. And, um, and I'm really, really happy that uh, my, my, my colleagues all agreed that it was, in, that was important. So. The awareness is very important. And thank you for coming in today to represent that. We appreciate it. Excuse me, Mayor, if I may. Yes. Mr. Bennett has um, given a, pr a video oh, that great. he'd like to show. Oh. So we were going to wait until public comment, but if it would be appropriate I think it would be now, appropriate now. If he could come up. So sure. Sorry, give me a few seconds. I did write something. Okay. Two little hands are resting. A little heart still. A little son we loved is waiting for us just over the hill. Y'all called it pedestrian, child, pedestrian, safety. I said child safety and awareness, so I just listened to my words. Child Safety Day, in remembrance of all children who have tragically transitioned from all types of pedestrian accidents. Today, we take the time to highlight Malachi Dimitri Bennett, born April 9, 2010, living up to the true meaning of his name, a messenger. In the short time he lived, he taught us all how to love, to be loved, and to follow our intuition. We take this time to remember him simply because he turned on the light that we did not see. It is deeper than child safety awareness. It is more about the impact children have on our lives and then recognizing it after a tragic loss. On February 18, 2013, Malachi darted out into the road just after briefly speaking to me and without seeing me for a month. Mm. On that day, he ran into the road and was hit by a truck. It was totally an accident. That day we will never forget. But this Child Safety Awareness Day is for Malachi and all the children going before, after, and soon to become a safety net for all to follow. Let's save our children, for they are the present and future leaders. Let's help them grow like flowers here on earth, lead them to everlasting possibilities, and give them somewhere to come back to. Malachi Dimitri Bennett, April 9, 2010, February 18, 2013. It'll be 10 years since that day. And this is what I bring to you, MBD Foundation, a foundation to bring more awareness to pedestrian traffic, all type of accidents, but also to help those in need. There's a lot of people who need help after going through such tragic loss. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Montreal. Okay. Um, moving to our next presentation, which is a report from our school board member, Erica Whitfield. Great to see you. Welcome. 
Thank Thank you very much for having me. Um, My name is Erica Whitfield. I'm the school board uh, representative for District 4, and today I am pleased to have my colleague here with me today, our newly elected school board member, Edwin Ferguson, who uh, will be sharing my time, if that's okay with everyone. Um, I believe we planned for 10 minutes. I have, of course, way more information than I can cover in 10 minutes, but I'm going to keep it uh, as short as possible for you all. Um, First of all, I want to say, you know, we, we really are trying to work to have the best relationship we can with Delray Beach and I know there's been um, a lot of uh, back and forth about um, about the old Carver site and I just want to say that um, you know myself and my colleagues um, and our staff would really like to make sure that we find the right answer for whatever the community needs so as we go forward um, I know that's just a preface for my presentation today but as we go forward I would very much like to work with you all to make sure that we're doing what's right for our community in Delray and um, I've, so, I've uh, represented y'all for eight years now and I'm, I'm gonna at least do it for the next four so I hope that you'll be calling me and letting me know if there's any concerns that you have um, a couple years ago, we actually updated the mission of the school district, and I find this uh, really important to share at all of our presentations. Um, our mission now is to educate, affirm, and inspire each student in an equity-embedded environment. This is very important, and, and I like it because it's a shorter mission, and it really permeates through everything that we're doing. Also, I want to share with you the core beliefs that we put together because I think this is important for what we're doing. Every student can learn and is capable of growth and success. Every student is deserving of programs and opportunities that match their needs and interests. We all have a role in student success that includes our communities and our municipalities. High expectations for both students and employees will promote higher performance. Investing in our employees is an investment in their ability to serve our students. Diversity makes our community stronger and must be celebrated and fostered. And Palm Beach County schools are the community's best choice and we must prove that each day with an unwavering commitment to prioritizing the needs of our students. We just put together a new strategic plan. Um, I won't belabor it, but our themes are academic excellence and growth, because that's what we need to do. A student-focused culture. We had a lot of um, concerns during the pandemic about whether or not we were focusing on our students. And I believe that we are, and, and we always were. And so now we're really trying to really put that forward through customer service and focusing on our children. Mental health and wellness, which has become a very large theme, and I'll talk about that really briefly, and committed and impactful employees. Um, The basic theme for um, the scores throughout the district um, through these past few years has been, we were doing pretty good, then COVID, and that wasn't great, and now we're on our way back up. And so we've seen this increase in our students being back in the building, having the opportunity um, to be in front of teachers who care and are really putting in that time. And you all will see in some of the schools in Delray that impact is being shown. Um, just the, the, the decline, but also the increases. Um, Banyan Creek in particular increased in English language in grades four and five. Orchard View has been a shining star in my district. Um, They have increased in grade four. Um, I only have a few schools. Mr. Ferguson has many more. Um, We also had improvement in Carver at grade six, which was amazing. We've been doing um, the advanced math placement program in many of our schools. And when we do, we see those students are achieving at almost 100% and definitely 100% at Banyan. So we're seeing that happen. Um, Math, we've had improvement at Carver and everything except for grade seven. Banyan Creek and Orchard View had a bit of a decline in science and that's something that we've seen district wide and we are putting again more focus on science. We'll be doing a lot more partnerships in the community to try to bring in um, opportunities for everyone to uh, contribute. So we're having the um, Cox Science Center is now leading our STEM initiatives which I think is going to you're going to see a difference when we're talking about the quality of what we're doing. So I will skip ahead on some of these. Um, One of the other things that happened during the pandemic was um, internal and out of school suspensions. So, um, you know, like a detention is what you used to think of an internal suspension as, so being held in the school but you weren't allowed to go to class. Um, We've actually been working to decrease that throughout the school district. Post pandemic, kids hadn't been in a classroom. They hadn't been interacting with their teachers and we saw those numbers go up. So those numbers are on the decline again, which is great. It means that the Uh, rules, the structure, everything that we know schools are great at is kind of coming back around and we're starting to see that happen. One of the things that we're doing to focus on equity is to make sure that our students are being placed into accelerated coursework um, if they're capable of it and the decision of if they're if they have the potential is no longer just on their 
grades that they're getting in their test scores, but on their teacher and then their principal recommendations. So we're actually recommending students to um, higher coursework in middle school and going into high school based on principal and teacher recommendations. That has been a really wonderful thing because then we disaggregate the data and we look at it um, Hispanic, black, and white to make sure that this is something that's actually improving among our racial subgroups and it really has happened, which is amazing. The mental health that I just want to mention very briefly, um, if you remember in the pandemic, we, um, or prior, prior to the pandemic, my apologies, um, after Stoneman Douglas, we actually asked the community for funding around mental health. And so we put in 170 school counselors, we've put a ton of money behind this. And just in this fiscal school year, we've had 14,883 students receiving services district wide, um, enough. Um, 111,000 to 111, 200 and 111,237 intervention services provided to students. Um, and then we have these outside services that come in and they've been providing in us. Uh, services in the schools, 16,000 individual counseling sessions and 1,800 kids have received those sessions as well. Uh, the last thing I'll mention really quickly um, is that I do go to your chamber meetings quite frequently and I will be coming um, up very shortly to talk about our legislative priorities as a school district. If anybody's interested, I did bring those with me in the, in the, in the consideration of time. I want to let Mr. Ferguson speak about his schools, but um, I will be there talking about um, our legislative priorities and then as they align with the city of Delray Beach, you all have been so wonderful to support us in the past and making sure that we have, you know, the focus on education, which I know is so important to your community. You've done so much to support us. Um, so school safety and security is always high on our list. Um, mental health services being funded at an appropriate level, funding in general for teachers and our and our work is always really, really important. And then, um, you know, we're going into a new accountability time. So really making sure that that's appropriate for everyone. Um, and then BPK, which is something that's uh, near and dear to both my heart and to Mr. Ferguson. So with that, I will pass it along then. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm attorney Edwin Ferguson, your new board member. I think I'm at uh, week 10 now. So uh, still still have the new car smell, if you will. But in any event, I wanted to give you all a presentation, or a brief presentation on the five schools in Delray, which are in District 7. Those are Village Academy, Atlantic High School, Spady, Plamosa, and Pine Grove Elementaries. So I like to focus on numbers because I think that's kind of universal. I don't want to get into uh, some of the other minutiae, particularly since I only have five minutes. So overall, the Delray schools have been doing really well. And I'm looking at years, school year 2021 versus school year 2022, so the last two years. In regard to English language arts, Pine Grove in particular stood out. Their ninth grade, we saw a 9% hike between the third grade um, aptitude scores in 2021 versus 2022, and a 17% hike in the fourth grader. So Mrs. King, if you were watching this, keep up the good work. We need to package that and send that through to many more schools. But also, not to be left out, Spady um, did a really good job in terms of increasing their third grade aptitude scores by 25%, which when I saw that, I was like, wow, is this a typo? So uh, to Mrs. Tata, keep up the good work mm -hmm. as well. Uh, Village Academy also, had, well, obviously Village Academy is a different different bird in that regard. They have many grades there, but they had a 15% hike amongst the 17, uh, seventh graders, 9% hike amongst the eighth graders from year 21 to year 22, um, and then also a 16% and 11% respectively for the ninth grade and the 14th, I'm 14th, I'm sorry y'all, the fourth grade. Of course, that's Ms. Latoya Dixon. She's doing a great job there. So Ms. Dixon, please keep up the good work. Interestingly enough though, social studies and history, I didn't really see much of a, of a, a bump across any of the schools. Um, I don't know why. I'm definitely gonna follow up with Mr. Miller. He's the, the gentleman who's kind of the, the expert of the numbers, if you will, to get a better understanding as to maybe some policies and some collaboration that the district maybe can do with Delray. And I want to take a moment to actually kind of honor you all because you all are very different. As, as I go through my district, it's comprised of about eight cities, very different in a positive way in terms of your intentional and continued interest in all things education. And I think that's, I think that's largely what has helped affect these positive numbers inside of the school. So what you all are doing is what I'm asking every other municipality, irrespective of whose district they're in, to do is do, do their that, be engaged, be intentional, because this is what you should be doing it for, the children, as the gentleman said before, they're our present and our future. 
having said all that, I'm going to step back down off of my soapbox and get back to the numbers. In terms of science, Village Academy, once again, really stood out. I mean, it's a small, it's a small engine that could, but they keep doing great things over there at Village Academy. 15% um, bump in the eighth grade from year 2021 to 2022. Math. Math, we had every... Oh, is that Village Academy? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So as far as math goes, and I know I'm running up on my time, so two more minutes, so I'll get through this. Pine Grove, once again. It was two seconds, but that's quite oh, all right. Go ahead. Oh, I can just give myself five, but okay, minute 55. But, it was yeah. a speaker before, yes, go okay. right ahead. Pine Grove had a 55% bump in the third grade from year 2021 to 2022. Again, Mrs. King, my former classmate, she's doing a great job here. You all have a real jewel over there at Pine Grove. So please be sure to let her know how much you all appreciate her for the work that she and her staff are doing. 16% um, in fourth grade also in terms of math. Plumosa, 12, 19, and 7 from third, fourth, and fifth grade. I mean, these are huge numbers in my opinion. Spady, again, Mrs. Tata, 34% in the third grade and 17% in the fourth grade. This is not something I've seen in many other schools, and I, I want to applaud them for the good work they're doing, and I hope that it's continuing into this school year, and I'm, I'm certain it is. Uh, Village Academy, once again, 12% uh, in fourth grade, 10% in eighth grade. Uh, in algebra, they had a 34% hike between the persons who were sitting for the algebra test in 2021 versus 2022, and a 9% hike in geometry. I mean, this stuff is amazing what's going on down here. Uh, I know I've said that not three times, but I truly mean it. What we need, as I see it, um, as, a, as a member of the community, although I'm recently elected, continued mentorship. So we do a really good job down here in Delray in terms of supporting our students. I like to see us do it at an even higher and more intentional level because the proof is in the pudding. Mm -hmm. You guys are kicking butt. You people, oh, you know, Jen Denutra here, I don't want to offend anybody. Delray residents are kicking butt and taking names in education, and I think if we continue to do that, we can – help continue to be leaders in all things to education. So I really applaud you all for that. And I want I would be remiss if I didn't speak to Carver. Clearly, I'm one of the persons that believe that we should preserve the Carver structure. And I've spoken to the superintendent, um, impressed him on the issue, and Joe Sanchez as well for a definitive statement because I don't like to really be ambiguous. I'm a pretty straightforward person. What you all should know is that the plan is to maintain the exterior of the buildings and they are going to renovate the interior of the buildings. The superintendent, and this is my time to stop talking, he wants to expand the number of vocational um, units that we have throughout the district, so he's targeted Carver and also the old Roosevelt up my way in West Palm Beach as perfect sites for that. So the buildings will be maintained. They won't be raised. Those three buildings, I believe, if I have the numbers correct in my head, will not be knocked down, but they will be renovated in the interior. Forgive me for running over. I will be back right. um, at some point in the next month or two to give a state of District 7, and that we can kind of flesh out any concerns that you as citizens have for all things public education because I'm here to serve. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Commissioner Johnson. Yes, thank you. Congratulations to both of you thank on you. your newly, uh, why should I say, re-election or re-election and election. I commend you both. It's not an easy job to serve on any school district in the state at the moment. Uh, I have two things. I think there's a disconnect about what the city had hoped to do with our historic Carver High School. Um, I don't know how and where, but after speaking with Ms. Uh, Whitfield, it appears that one part of our city, our Ed Board, is saying one thing, and we have an organization who is, has been out for the past 10 more years trying to say, give us the building, give us the buildings, and the Ed Board is saying, oh, no, the city doesn't want them. So I don't know how that happened, but I know everyone who's involved. I would hope that... Uh, Whatever this disconnect is, it disappears because the historic Carver High School um, group is just chafing at the bit to preserve these buildings as more than just school district. You've got enough, I think, on your plate with all of the schools that you have. I don't know what you're planning to do, but you've got a new building going up. Just give us those for, <laughs> for historic so, usage Johnson, for you the so community much. to go back and say these were the buildings that made many of us, me, I don't know if that's a good thing or bad thing, but we've got Miss Odom who's been at least a year at the high school, and I'm sure there might be others who attended historic Carver High School. So whatever that disconnect is, we had a contract that we thought was going to be executed, but 
we felt that there was something in it that might prevent us from going forward and it didn't happen. And now I'm hearing that our ed board is saying we don't want them. So whatever that disconnect is, I hope we can resolve it. Um, well, and Ms. Johnson, um, Commissioner Johnson, can I just say that since our conversation two minutes before this meeting started, I have texted with our superintendent and our chief operating officer, and they are going to be calling your city manager so that staff can have an opportunity to discuss this. Because just like Mr. Ferguson, I, I understood exactly what he was saying, and that was my understanding as well, coming in here that the city wanted uh, to see us fix up the building. So we are in our budget process right now, and we were just working to try to find a way to be able to provide Delray with what we believed that Delray wanted. So we're we're waiting direction um, okay. from whatever If you can't fix them up and give them to us, we'd be happy. But <laughs> well, uh, if that's not something staff, you can do, I can understand let's that. Let's have staff discuss it, and then hopefully they'll come back to us in our official capacities, and we can, we can make because this. Because the community, the community is hurting. We want that school. It is one of our pride and joys of an era. And from 1958 to someone will have to tell me when it was demoted and then made a middle school and then somehow or another became a full service center. Um, there are people who, if we wait too much longer, won't be here to celebrate the ribbon cutting. So whatever you can do, I look to the two of you to do that. One more thing, thank you, uh, HR1. Yes, well, I don't know if they want to talk about HR1. What, oh, you're talking about the That's bill? the one with the... Oh, um, the African-American... Um, no, 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 no. I don't know if that even sorry. has a number. That was just top down. This is what we're not going to do anymore. This is a legislative first bill on the House saying we're going to um, allow more vouchers. Oh, gosh. Taking yes, away sorry, the sorry, money from number. the public schools. Yeah. And the system is not good. Yeah. And I know it is not something that you have a lot of control over, but it should definitely be one of the things that we as a city and you as Absolutely. the school district uh, just pounds. How can you keep taking money out of the public school system and expecting it to not fail yes. if you're not going to give the money? And you take it and give it to students who go to places, academies, whatever they want to be called, and they fail and toss the kids back, the children, I, I back into our purview. I appreciate you taking this on as a cause. It's a huge deal for us at the school district. Our concerns really stem from, um, and I'll definitely let Mr. Ferguson also address this, but our concerns stem from there's only so much money for education. And this past year, we spent $70 million funding vouchers in their previous iteration uh, to go to private schools, just private schools. Um, now with this new bill, what they're looking at is um, even expanding it further so that there are no restrictions whatsoever and the impact could be detrimental in a devastating way to public schools as we know them. So um, I'm very comfortable saying that we are not in support of this, um, uh, at least um, I'm not, and I, um, I know our superintendent is not because he used to be our CFO and he sees that financial impact that would happen. Mr. Ferguson, would you like to talk? Yeah, so this is right in my wheelhouse because we, we're not, we don't have standing to really go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the governor in our capacity as board members, so I think we should be about the business of the educating. legislature. So, yeah, that bill is not, it, ha it hasn't actually been enacted yet, and I'm not well, sure. They if just the put it in the harper, and who knows? This is the thing. We have to do a better job of marketing what programs we have inside of the district. We have to be willing to compete for for the dollar, if you will. So it's no it's no longer guaranteed that it's going to come mm -hmm. through your door now. So if you don't compete, and this is something I said when I was on the campaign trail, if you don't compete, you're destined to lose. Mm -hmm. So if we want to sit here and cry about it, then you'll see that there will continue to be an atrophy of the dollars that are there, which will affect our economies of scale, which will ultimately constrict our ability to educate. So I. I'm encouraging everybody in the administrative side of the district to make sure that we're good partners with, with each city, letting the parents and the children, most importantly, know why coming to our school is better than going to, say, charter school X or private school or even mom. And I can't imagine too many moms and dads not want to do a whole lot of home learning after what happened back in 2020. But, yeah, we can do it better than you two newsflash for the majority of you. So that's kind of where things are, and that's how I feel about it. But if you really anybody who's listening to this really has a problem with what's, what is happening in Tallahassee, you have a simple solution to attack that. Get out and vote. Right. Vote for people that are going to put forward what you deem to be more reasonable legislation. And if you don't, then we have to continue navigating these landmines. And other, and other than voting, in addition to voting, rather, the public isn't, is not aware of what's going on up there. 
I don't know if this is going to get traction, but the others have, and I imagine that this will also. And when one of the representatives said, oh, it's not going to be a big impact on the schools, obviously she either doesn't have children in the public schools or she doesn't understand anything about education. So I think this is one thing that we can come together on. We might disagree about what to do with Carver, Historic Carver, but I think this is one thing we can agree on. And I look forward to working with you on it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Boston. So first I'd like to th thank you for going through each one of our schools and, uh, and mentioning the leadership there because that's, that's really important in Delray Beach and we have principals that stay around a really long time and, uh, and put in all the hard work and we also have some new principals that are absolute rock stars, especially um, you know, over, at, over at Plumosa uh, with uh, Principal Smith, I believe, right? Yeah, she's, um, yeah, she's fantastic. Um, I, I, I have to... Um, echo Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Johnson, I thought we were taking ownership of, of, of the uh, historic Carver site. Um, we have talked about it many times. We were, Ms. Jellin has given us updates on legal paperwork. We were, we were working out the, the construction space, parking agreements, I mean really pretty far down. Um, and then to all of a sudden here in your meeting, um, I think it was just last week, I think mm -hmm. last Friday, Thursday or Friday, Wednesday. That you're considering, um, I guess, keeping it right. and and renovating it and possibly using it, you know, for the demand of ESOL in GED um, or other or other programs. I think we have uh, we've spoken as a city um, that we do want to take ownership of those buildings. Now, part of me is like, hey, one less thing for us to worry about. Yeah. Right. But <laughs> but I don't think that that's short. That's really short term thinking. So Long-term thinking for that property and what the community wants with that property um, is, is not, I don't think, the vision that you guys have for it. This shift that we were making to incorporating it into our budget um, would cost us millions, and it was a big effort to try to um, do what Delray Beach wanted us to do. So if we have gotten miscommunication on that, that, that is something I would love to remedy. So I just want you all to know, we, the goal here was only to do what Del Rey, we believed, wanted. So if that's no longer the case or if there's been a shift or miscommunication, please tell us because, um, you know, this is, I, I'm, I'm, to... I'm a little horrified in this moment just yeah. that we have been really pushing our staff to find the money to fix up the buildings because we thought you didn't want them. So, And I, and I just want to jump in one, one last thing because you had mentioned it right before the meeting when we had two seconds to talk. Yeah. Um, is that our you, you referenced our education board yes making recommendations to you so our recommend our education board makes recommendations to the Commission we then work with our partner in the school district um, and I think that's really important um, and it's it's in their in their mission in what their group is supposed to they, they will they should not be making recommendations directly to you but rather through us okay. well so we're gonna that's important we're gonna today. wait for your direction okay. from you. Madam mayor yeah Yes, sir. I'd like to interject for a second because we previously made a commitment for a February 21st workshop meeting discussion regarding the Carver School, and I'm really thankful that Ms. Per Ms. Excuse me, Whitfield and Mr. Ferguson offered their comments relative to leadership of the school district getting together with my office and other members of the executive leadership team to prepare accordingly. So an integral part of tomorrow's executive leadership team meeting discussion will be to get to that place so that we can have a fruitful dialogue during a February 21st workshop meeting. So thank you very much in that regard, but I thought it'd be appropriate and productive to interject to that effect. Very good, thank you. And in the meantime, Mr. Moore, I'd like you to tell us if you can, one-on-one -on -one or in the public, how this miscommunication happened. Because for years we have been working to get the property from the school district and to make it historic Carver. And all of a sudden we have our advisory board communicating with the district without our knowledge? I'm not aware of the formal I'm direction from the board at all. What well, so I agree. I understand, but I'm just saying that I think that what we should do is not just just find out and and and, and have the the relationship of the of this of the district talk to the city and bring it back to us. And that's the direction. So I'll be more than happy to make arrangements accordingly, but if I may to clarify, I'm not aware of any direction from the formal Derry Beach education board to that effect whatsoever. So nevertheless, I think City Attorney Jellin has done a pretty nice job of keeping everybody updated relative to the legal 
process, and we've been back and forth as well with Mr. Sanchez in particular. So Good. we will be following up so that we can prepare adequately for February 21st. So thank you. Whitfield, Mr. Ferguson, thank you again for that feedback, and we'll go from there. Commissioner Casale. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so just thank you both for coming after your hard-fought hard wins. Um, I appreciate the st statistics. Last time you were here, things were kind of bleak, so this is very Fruit. uplifting. <laughs> Um, and I definitely share your um, concern with respect to, you know, partnerships in the community are necessary, and I'm a big proponent of that. So thank you so much for your time. And just to Ms. Johnson, one other thing the mayor and I heard the other day is that books are being taken off library shelves mm -hmm. right now all over the state, mm -hmm. and it's frightening. Um, and I know that's not something we would want to utilize you to address because, uh, you know, you're, you're right, your finances need to be used on the children. But we do need to educate and, and discuss this at some point. I do think that um, Palm Beach County has done a remarkable job with the books um, as far as making sure that we uh, follow the letter of the law but also keep as many books as we possibly can. Um, so what we've done is we've created sections within the in the libraries and the media centers uh, for fourth and fifth graders only. Okay. Uh, very few books have been completely outright taken um, off the shelves. The only reason we pulled them off were for reasons not related to this legislation, just okay. upon review, and we are reviewing every classroom book. Book so that people um, hopefully can have you know faith that you know we have amazing teachers who are really trying to do the right thing and having uh, you know quality books but we're not we're not wholesale getting rid of them other places in the state yeah. have cleared out all their books and yeah. we're starting over we're not we haven't done that thank you and I appreciate that extra effort on your part thank you both for coming thank in you. and I just wanted to say also because I, I don't think most of uh, the city of Delray Beach understands what the all-american city is all about but it has to do with education and and the city always working towards making sure that we're preventing slide during the summer months and different different programs that the city is doing so that all-american city insignia behind us is is about what we do for education so anyway I just would end it with that and uh, say thank you both very thank much you. and maybe we can get another year on that uh, that old placard that, that, <laughs> that would be wonderful be amazing. thank you all so much thank you so, thank you. so much for thank coming you. in bye-bye appreciate your reports all right moving on to the um, com comments and inquiries on the agenda non agenda items we'll we'll start with uh, mr. Moore I yield at this time. Thank you. Okay, very good. So we're going to move to the public. Anybody who is here that would like to speak to any item that is not a quasi-judicial or a public hearing item, that would be the time. State your name and address, and you'll have three minutes. Oh. Sorry it took so long. <laughs> good afternoon, Mayor, Commissioners, uh, Lynn Kateri, Mr. Moore, Kerry Glickstein, 1118 Waterway Lane. I'm sorry I missed the meeting uh, regarding the prior subject matter that I addressed with the commission, but I just wanted to come in to at least clarify from my point of view where I hope this was going, but seemed to diverge dramatically from there, which um, uh, what, what I was speaking to the commission about was simply the need for sidewalks, particularly from Atlantic Avenue through the curve at Beach Drive, and that can only be on one side of the street. Mm -hmm. uh, what happened in the interim was a survey directed to a lot of people in that area that lacked any context about what the survey was for, and it also had questions, th only three, that were really not germane to what the whole sub subject matter was about. So I don't know what the results were, but I would expect that, that they were not positive. Oh, I think they were, actually. Oh, were okay. That they were I, I don't even know. You know, it just, it just but, but it, nevertheless, it, it was a survey about something that's physically impossible. Mm -hmm. So um, rather than dwell on that, I just wanted to circle back because I do think the need is paramount. It's not, it's just getting worse. Uh, and... Uh, I think that a lot of people would appreciate some attention to that area. Yes, some people will will lament the loss of their ficus hedges and some trees, but as we all know, things grow back very quickly here, and I just don't think public safety of that magnitude should be minimized by a survey that was really more about aesthetics and convenience. So I would appreciate if you could circle back and, and take another look at that and, and really focus on what I think is a far more simple project. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Appreciate the clarification. Yes, ma'am. 
Hi, my name is Beth Crakem. This is my first time at a commissioner's meeting. I live Welcome. at 530 North Swinton Avenue, and I moved here to Delray Beach in 2019. This beautiful city, we chose it because of its walkability. That was the, one of the main reasons. And so I'm here to support the proclamation for pedestrian safety. That story from Mr. Bennett was um, heartbreaking and, and also terrifying. I, I live at 6th and Swinton. Mm -hmm. I cross that street multiple times a day on foot and by bike with my two small children, ages four and two. And I see lots of other people crossing there as well. It is so dangerous. We, uh, we have this Swinton Improvement Project coming up, which I'm excited about. Um, and I think it's a perfect opportunity to take additional action beyond this wonderful proclamation for pedestrian safety, February 7th, to um, take another action to support pedestrian safety right there on Swinton Avenue. Um, Sixth Street is the main feeder, one of the main feeders into Lake Ida neighborhood. And uh, George Bush as well, we would love crosswalks there. That would be fantastic. And we've put several neighbors, myself, we've put our comments in to the project and figured we would come here to um, voice our comments in public as well. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. My name is Marty Doro. I live at 236 Southeast Fifth Avenue. And I'm here today to introduce myself. I have an application in for the General Employees Retirement Fund Board. Okay. But I wanted to give you some context and a little more background. Um, I've been a new resident since September, but my daughter has lived here over 10 years. Love the city, love everything about it, walkability, and go on and on. But pension funds, people ignore a lot of times. It's more than a pool of capital. It's more than equity and fixed income and alternative investments. It's really the means to support our employees and provide them a retirement with dignity, uh, a check that will come to them that they can feel comfortable in. The pension fund provides those resources. I know this firsthand because my dad worked for the water department in the city of Chicago, and when he retired, he and mom lived on the retirement check from the city. They lived in dignity, not high rollers, but enjoyed life and were very proud. And I want to make sure that the city of Delray Beach the retirement system has the resources to continue that. Um, and by the way, my son also is a municipal employee up near Portland, Maine, and in decades to come, he's going to retire, retire and need that pension check as well. I hope that municipality is as well run as Delray Beach, because um, I've been doing some research on that. My personal background, after starting out in the IBM company, I decided to go get an MBA in finance at the Kellogg School. For the past 30 years, I've been working in retirement systems. I've worked with trustees, administrators, staff, investment consultants. I've seen some tough decisions. I understand them. And I wanted you to know that I am willing to work very hard to get up to speed on the issues, review all the alternatives, review the data, and make the best decisions for the city. And I hope if I'm successful, I'll have many years to work to make sure that the city of Delray Beach has a retirement system they can be proud of, and all the retirees are going to get a happy check in the month. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. Thank you so much for What's coming What's your in? name again, sir? Pardon me? Name again. Marty Doro. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Barry Brumberg. I live at 111 Southeast 2nd Street, the Mark Condominium. Um, I have a noise complaint. I know it's minor, but it's very noisy from a, a restaurant bar called the OG. Um, it's at uh, 166 Southeast 2nd Street. And in the last year, I guess it expanded a lot after the pandemic. It's become a real um, noisy spot, especially between the hours like 11 a.m., 11 p.m. And, and 1 a.m. in the morning when everybody seems to accumulate there. Um, I spoke with Anthea um, Gian, Gianniotis, mm -hmm. Gianniotis last week, and she suggested I come here. And here's, I'm just going to read you the text of the email she sent me. She said, thank you for bringing this issue to our attention. I am sharing your concerns with other staff members and we'll check the distances, et cetera. Live entertainment outside requires a conditional use, which has not been approved for this location. You may want to bring the issue up during a city commission meeting, that's why I'm here, um, as the board is working on a noise ordinance. 
The appropriate time would be in section five comments. That's why I'm here, and inquiries in agenda and non-agenda. I have opened the director of neighborhood and community service. I have, I'm sorry, I have copied the director of neighborhood and community services and the city attorney in our communications. We work on noise issues together. And, um, you know, I've, I've, I've called, you know, the non-emergency number for the police a couple times, and I guess they come there. It's very, very busy, you know, especially after 11 o'clock at night. It's not just they have a DJ there outdoors. And I was there the other night, on Friday night, I was there with, um, with Jose Morales, who's one of the code enforcement officers. And I've spoken with Henry Thompson about this, and he's the one that sent Jose Morales to, to monitor the situation. Um, most of what they're doing is legal. I mean, oh, I'm, in, I'm in an entertainment district, and they're allowed to make noise until 1 a.m. on Fridays and Saturdays and until midnight the rest of the time of the week. The major issue occurs on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and that's when Jose Morales was there. And I actually met him there on Friday night, and I sent um, Anthea a video of the, of the DJ outside. They have a DJ outside and a DJ inside. Um, unfortunately, what the problem is is really my building is sort of all the sounds are reflecting into my building. If you walk around the corner from, the, from where this is, it's quiet. So I, I'm like the end result of, of the DJ, of the sound coming out. Um, I spoke with Jose Morales today, he gave me a call, and he said they do not have a permit. So what they're going to do is put the G DJ inside and leave the speakers outside, which won't solve the problem at all. You still have the noise coming out. But I, there's, a fence around, there's a fence around the whole property, kind of like a nice homey wooden fence. And I did in that my own analysis situation, and I was thinking that, I don't know if this is legal or if this is within your, your purview, but they should put some sort of sound, okay, one more second, just some, some my, my analysis is, put a sound, sound abatement system around the fence. Mm -hmm. Put some sound material that would absorb the sound, because I think that's the only thing that would, uh, would really um, help the situation. <laughs> Moving the, the DJ in and keeping the speakers outside is not gonna change anything. And Jose also mentioned to me that there were two complaints on Friday and Saturday night about the noise again, and it wasn't from me. I said, no, I didn't complain. I said, because we had spoken. So okay, I thanks, just wanted sir. to bring this up to commission. It's a small issue for maybe a small number of people. But I also heard from Jose that he said the, the, the person who owns the building there is developing that whole street on Southeast right. Second. I think he wants to have a good relation with the community. I think he's a very legitimate businessman. Thank but you, it's sir. unfortunate. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask a question? We're, there was supposed to be, when that came in front of us for consideration, there were supposed to be foliage planter boxes around the exterior that was supposed to buffer sound. I'm sorry, Anthea. Just curious, because based on what this gentleman described, that appears not to be the case. Well, I, I think beyond that, the site plan approval that you saw was for a restaurant, which has Correct. outdoor dining, yes. not outdoor DJ and dancing, dancing and right. other things. So we go back to your patrons are supposed to be seated at a table. It's not a club. So, um, but we already are addressing this through code enforcement, and um, we'll hopefully have a resolution. So the conditional and use was not then given for um, no. outdoor entertainment. No, no, okay. no it wasn't. Okay, so, thank you. Um, but it wasn't requested at the time either so that right you know and and that process allows for exactly the type of mitigation factors to be considered so well, I think it sounds like if we just get code enforcement to enforce what the rules are that mm -hmm. this would alleviate the situation okay. and it seems like it goes without saying that speakers is equivalent to the DJ yes Thank you. The attorney for the OG is actually watching this yes. and has told me he will be reaching out to his clients. Today. Very good. Fabulous. Right. Well, hopefully you, we sir. won't have to see you back here, Mr. Brandenburg, and it'll be taken care of. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you for coming in and giving us that information. Yes, ma'am. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. I'm Maris Cagato. I'm the Cultural Arts Director for the DDA and have been managing the Cornell Art Museum. Um, just wanted to come and give you an update about where we are, what we're doing, what's happening there. Um, so we have opened the museum on the 28th. We had about 500 people come to the opening, which was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Many people were thankful that it was reopened and happy to have the space vibrant again. We have Surfing Florida, which is um, history, 100-year history of the surfing 
um, culture in, in our uh, southeast Florida area. We have hashtag Love Del Rey that features 16 local Delray Beach based artists who have sort of helped to grow up our arts culture here and have been in, um, an integral part of renting gallery space and studio space. So they've been with us and we wanted to showcase them as we reopened. Um, we've had three First Friday Art Walks. We've had about 100 people at each one during the time from uh, December, January, and February. We always have art pop-ups during that time, so not only are our current exhibitions featured, but also pop-ups. We have nine re docents right now who are regularly scheduled to um, volunteer and staff the place. We have seven returning former docents from the previous organization, so they have come back, want to be part of what we're doing, and they're with us again. We have several uh, visitor information center volunteers that volunteer for the DDA who are also joining us for events and whatnot. Uh, we have two part-time folks we just hired um, to cover the weekend, so I don't have to be there 24-7. So that's been Good. great, um, having a couple of part-time people. We have coming up this weekend, Ohana Palooza. I wanted to make sure to invite you all to that. It's a family-friendly free event um, to bring people into the museum to talk about surfing, talk about water safety, and we have Surf Rider with us. We're going to be talking about conservation issues. It's a plastic-free event. So we're going to have children's games and uh, live music. Two live bands are going to be there. Um, and two films inside the museum, so that'll be nice. fun. We have the hashtag Love Del Rey Fashion Expo planned for March 3rd on our grounds and the pavilion grounds. And then inside the museum on the 3rd, we're going to do the shopping event. We'll start there with mimosas and um, some snacks in the morning and then um, that evening we have first friday art walk we have three artists who are in hashtag love del rey who also have fashion lines they'll be there with pop-up and models and so on so we have quite a lot happening in the museum on a regular basis plus we're doing a lot of outreach we're reaching out to the schools we want to make sure that students are welcome to come we've already had a couple of student tours uh, we're working with milagro on their upcoming um Black History Month event with Spady. I'm going to be judging some of the student art, which is going to be impossible, but bear with me. <laughs> Pray for me. It's not going to be easy. Um, but we're talking to homeschool groups, bringing them in, and we're planning some large outdoor um, art events that we're planning as well. Just Sounds like you guys are really doing a great job. We're, doing, and, uh, we're having fun, and we are happy to have it reopened, yeah. and we welcome you all to come. Glad to hear you're getting some time off with the family on yeah. the weekend, too. So. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Yes, ma'am. Hello, everyone. Vera Woods, 1985 Palm Cove Boulevard. I am here for two reasons. First, I'm so glad they did that education summary as a former educator to find that, uh, that uh, Delray Beach schools are in good hands, led by two of my sorority sisters at Village Academy and at Atlantic High School, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. You know how that goes, and you've actually met some of them. So thank you. Um, that was a point of privilege. But what I'm here today to do is to um, recommit um, to the process of um, developing Old School Square. Um, I don't have social media for a reason. I was a former high school teacher and think that it's a lot of waste of time, and a lot of people on social media are they have keyboard courage and would never step forward to say things to your face that they would do online. So I'm here to say that um, I'm committed, as well as the rest of the board, to the process of developing Old School Square in a way that is collaborative. When I was a teacher, um, I used to have students do, and you will all probably bone and groan, um, collaborative projects. Okay, you know how you have three or four kids working on a project together. There's always the slacker. There's the one that's overachiever, <laughs> the one that tears up the whole actual project and turns in what they want at the end. And you have to go back and find out Google Docs is now your friend because you can find out what time they switched everything. Um, but I think that the process, I always used to tell the students, the process is like making sausage. It's ugly. It's not very nice. But at the end, you can come out with a good product for those of you that eat meat. Um, but I think that's what the old school square process is. It's not pretty right now. Um, and we're trying to get to the finish line, but I think we all have the same goal in mind. Mm -hmm. um, you just heard what Maruska brought to you, and that was a list of just a few months of things that are planned. Um, and I hope that what she spoke of will be printed in some of the, um, I'm going to call them publications, because I talked to Laura, and Laura told me to 
filter what I say, but don't, you know, be your, bring your whole self to the podium, but not your whole self. Um, uh, so I want to make sure that um, you all know that we are committed to the process to make sure that everything comes out beneficially for us as well as the citizens of Delray Beach. So thank you very, very much. We appreciate you. Thank you, Vera. Yes, sir. Hello, <clears throat> Jason Bregman, 227 Lake Terrace. Thank you all for your time and your service. Um, just a few quick things. Um, just want to back up uh, what Beth Craigham said earlier and also support uh, Mr. Bennett and the good work and statements he made regarding pedestrian safety. This is an important issue. You know, we've been working on this issue as a community for quite some time. And um, some of the projects, some of the TPA projects that have been funded are moving forward. George Bush is, you know, very close to being completed, and soon we'll all be able to bike th there and walk. And it's really exciting to see. And some of those projects are moving forward. And um, I did want to note, though, uh, you know, we have this list. I always wave around this list. I keep it still. <clears throat> $32 million in TPA funding. You know, it's federal money that circulates through the county. And some of these projects are moving forward, but a lot of them are not. And so it would be important to make sure that we don't lose a lot of this funding. It's $32 million. It's not a small amount of money. Um, and also, I know we're doing a pedestrian bike master plan. I've been trying to participate, giving them some feedback. So the former folks, you know, with Human Power Del Rey. Um, but just to say, there's uh, more work that can be done and more grants to be written. They take like six years to get implemented. Mm -hmm. So if we let this gap just keep getting bigger and bigger, we're just, Delray's going to be the one city with this huge gap in funding. And yeah, we might end up using up the $32 million, but there'll be this huge gap for several years, so that would be a pity. But I live in the same neighborhood as Beth, and um, you know, you're doing this Swinton uh, Utility Improvement Project, and the one thing that the community has requested a few times is just crosswalks. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a four-way stop. That couldn't hurt, but it doesn't have to be a four-way stop. Um, we understand people want to smoothly ride down Swinton, but just putting in crosswalks with signs lets people know they need to yield to pedestrians. Mm -hmm. State law. It's really simple. And I know the engineers will come back and say, oh, well, you know, people need to move fast down this road and there's a speed limit, blah, blah, blah. But the thing is, is that it doesn't have to be a four-way stop. Four-way stop wouldn't be the worst thing, but most likely that's not going to happen and the engineers are going to say no. So I'm asking you as a commission to please ask staff, Let's not make this a, a very, uh, you know, binary issue. It's, it's, it doesn't have to be a four-way stop or nothing. There's a way to do it safely in a way that won't make everybody aggravated with a bunch of stops on Swinton. There's a crosswalk already. I believe at 16th or 17th. There should be one at 6th. There should be one at George Bush. And there really should be one every three to four blocks. It's just what's going to be safe for the community to be able to cross there. A lot of people use it, and right now it's incredibly unsafe. Um, so that's just the, the main thing I have to say. I want to make sure, again, that, um, that we also just please let's continue to work on that bike and pedestrian master plan. But even in the meantime, let's still apply to more TPA funding. It's just sitting there at the table, and our city should get more of that. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. I'd just like let's to say, um, along with having crosswalks, I think we're probably going to have to talk about the speed limit. I think the speed limit on Swinton is 35. Uh, people don't 25. observe that there is a pedestrian crosswalk. Yeah, I if think you're it's going 25. 25. Okay, well they're not going 25 miles an hour. No, they're not. But it is 25. And I, I was going to tell, just say one more thing. Um, uh, most of the work that we're doing right now in the city all takes into consideration the the, the bikeability, the p pedestrian. Um, we I know that it's not in your section, but if you go over to a little further south. 10th um, going all the way from fe yeah, Federal Highway all the way out to Dover Street is, is underway with huge, um, beautiful sidewalks. I'm, I'm over in that area bicycling daily. It's absolutely fantastic. So we're trying to bring that into many parts of our city in order to be able to make sure that it's, it's safer for people to be able to be on pedestrian. Yep, yep, absolutely. Okay, yes, sir. Michael Wynn, 1540 Northwest 18th Avenue. Mm -hmm. I'm different than everybody. I have something for you. Okay. What happens is that I'm a whistleblower. I called up Brenda and I gave her half a dozen leads. Then I called back again and I did the same thing again. And to Amanda and everybody. And of course, I spoke to Al and all the code compliance. And I understood how they work. When they cannot solve the problem, they close the case. Meaning that 
somebody ranting. It all started, by the way, it all started because a guy upstairs from me re, you know, redid the whole condominium. It's a two-story two condominium, but he didn't put lining on the floor. So every time he drags a chair, it's like, it's really disgusting. And the thing is that I had my mother there, a 90-year-old Holocaust survivor woman that I was trying to keep her alive. And they were doing that on purpose. And I could not get any help from city of Delray Beach on any level. So what happened is that my mother died and I cried for five years, but I'm not crying anymore. No more. So the thing is they figure that I'm pulling all these leads from my head, that it's all bullshit. Pardon your language, sir. It's okay. You, don't, you didn't do that. What happens is that they send me, a, I, I was in management my entire life. Different management than this. This is a different management. I had a management, they gave me the key and they wanted that I should deposit 400 million, not to spend. That's how car dealerships work. I ran car dealerships, five star. I opened Potemkin Toyota. I was sales manager in Queens Cadillac where I hired the first black woman in America to sell Cadillacs. Thank you. And I, what I did was I fired the entire force and I doubled the personnel and I hired only women because my mother told me to do that. And I won. Thank you. They were losing, but I won with all the women because what I did was I took the punch clock where they punched the things, I ripped it out of the wall. Because the thing is, in the morning I would come in, they would line up. Everybody's late. I told them nobody's late. I'm marking everybody on time and everybody working. They were so happy, we won. I decided for the right beach to get money. Because you're complaining, not enough money. You're gonna have money now. I got it right here. Okay. okay? If you're right here. Yep, you're out of time. So if you want to hand no, 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 hand it to the clerk. Hand it to the clerk. Hand it to the clerk. Okay. They told me that they check this with water bill. Okay. Nobody checks with water bill. Okay. There's no such a thing. HOA doesn't have water bills. This is the only way to check. There are people there. There's at least right now, if she goes on a computer, you find 500 rentals nobody pay and the thing is they not only rentals once they go illegal they do illegal construction there okay. that our code compliance doesn't get nothing all right so what we'll do is we'll look into this thank you mr go ahead. mr wind yes hi there hello fernanda wolfson at 744 south lake avenue Derry beach 33483 i am co-founder of coco plum nature school mother of two little boys three and six uh, I want to thank you, first of all, for putting a sidewalk on 14th and Old Dixie. It's been a few months, but thank you so much. My disabled mother lives right there, and we needed that sidewalk, so thank you so much. And with the Coco Plum students, uh, we walk everywhere. We have a place-based model, meaning the city is part of our classroom. We walk to Spady. We walk to uh, the Historical Society. We go everywhere. So really, I, I want to thank you for giving priority to um, pedestrian safety and for supporting my friend uh, Montre Bennett. So as part of the upcoming Swinton Improvement Project, I uh, second what Beth uh, Craigcom asked for, uh, to please consider crosswalks at Sixth Street and George Bush and keep our pedestrians safe. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, appreciate it. Sir. Montre Bennett, 323 Northwest 2nd Avenue. I just wanna stress stop signs. To me, force people to stop. Put a stop sign at every block, at every intersection. Force people to stop. As I know it, the set neighborhood is full of walkers and bikers. Listen to the people, listen to the residents, and do what the people ask. Sir. Sir. Good afternoon, Madam Mayor. C. Ron Allen, KOP Mentor Network, uh, Delray Beach. Let me just say thank you to the commission and the city for uh, partnering with us in, in observing uh, Black History Month activities this year. 
We had three events planned. We had we kicked off with the fashion show last week. We have this coming Saturday night. We have an evening of um, salute to Black Excellence on uh, Fifth Avenue. In fact, five African Americans here in the community will be recognized for their uh, excelling in their uh, various disciplines. And on the 30th, the last Sunday of this month, we'll be having uh, evening of uh, jam and jazz at the Libby Wesley Park. Truly must say, Madam Mayor, I am very thankful and happy to be a part of this um, this observance. Every time we've asked the city for anything, you've been gracious in helping us. And Mr. Mr. Moore, in particular, want to say thank you, sir, for having the confidence in us to do this. Uh, if, uh, for more information or for ticket sales for this coming uh, weekend event, which you'll be one of the honorees, Mrs. Johnson, as well as you, Mr. Thank Manager, you. you can get at um, eventbrite.com. Thank you very much. You didn't mention the Brain Bowl. Oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> Still have a minute to go. We do have uh, an academic component. We have an oratorical contest on the on the 19th of this month. That'll be at Pompey Park, uh, Sunday afternoon from 3 to Five, and we have a brain bowl, which will be on the last Sunday of this month. So, thank you so much. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Pablo Del Rio. Thank you, uh, Mayor and Commissioners, for bringing some attention to pedestrian safety today, and uh, especially Mayor Petrolio. Thank you for working on this. I am the Mindfulness teacher for the Mindfulness Club at Atlantic Community High School. I'm also the facilitator for the Wellness Circle at Village Academy High School. And I collaborate with uh, Montre Bennett and Fernanda Wolfson at Cocoa Plum Nature School. Uh, you know, how many uh, children, how many pedestrians can we afford to lose? I think we know the answer to that question is zero. Uh, and I believe there's a national campaign out there, Project Zero, uh, it may be called, something like that. Is the city yeah. participant in that? Wonderful. Uh, the, the stu some students after school uh, at Let's Out at Atlantic High School are walking home from school, and that's a busy road, that part of Atlantic Avenue. Uh, some of them are crossing the on-ramps to uh, I-95 uh, to go to work. Uh, students I know make that trek. So I'm wondering if the city <clears throat> is giving enough attention to pedestrian and bicycle safety. Uh, and if so, how, how is that being manifested? We we'll, we'll appreciate the words and the thoughts. Where's the money? Show us the money. Is there sufficient funding for pedestrian and bicycle safety relative to uh, you know, traffic? Uh, how many millions of dollars uh, Jason Bregman mentioned are available for uh, traffic, but what about pedestrian and bicycle safety? Um, I believe there was a position created for that, for that job. Uh, I'm not sure if it's still, if it's still there, if it's filled. it's filled. Yeah, so that's one way. If it's nobody's job, then it's nobody's responsibility. Uh, but also, I, I invite the commissioners um, to make it a little bit more of their job to protect the safety of pedestrians and cyclists in this city, uh, including the children uh, who are here today uh, and the children who are on the street uh, right now. So please consider uh, in both the budget but also in the uh, time spent on policy, on budgeting uh, pedestrians and cyclists. Thank you. Thank you. And just so you're aware, we're, um, we do a, a tremendous amount of, or we spend a tremendous amount of money every year for this um, with those TPA projects. Those are not paid by 100% by, and we take a large portion of that. So we are putting in um, money into those um, upgrading the streets, especially when you look down on 10th Avenue and you see that there isn't even a, a, a sidewalk, it's just a dirt path. 
Um, so all of that is being transformed. We are looking at each area and trying to make sure that we are making it safer for everybody. And that's something that's been left behind for a very long period of time, so we are acting on it. So thank you very much again for bringing it to our attention. Yes, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, Laura Simon with the Downtown Development Authority. Um, I'm just here to just uh, comment on some or address some of the comments that were brought up at January's meeting um, from the commission, both the January, mostly January 10th, regarding uh, the no left turns, sense and traffic and congestion that's happening in downtown. Um, primarily also any, um, as it relates to special events and congestion in downtown. All of those areas and items we've been working on for um, years and have uh, addressed over the years and I've been working with city staff to provide information from the past of um, some of these projects and consultants and they've you've got great work that's been done over the years regarding some of these programs and I know that we're working at the special event policy so we look forward to being part of that as an organization especially since this all happens in the downtown area as well as address um, the curbside and parking management study that was presented in September 6 to you all as a presentation mm -hmm. that has lots of recommendations for implementation and just really highly um, recommend that we circle back to that and understand what of that plan has there's many items our board as well as a parking board spent years uh, a couple years now working on that plan and lots of outcomes came from that from the consultants perspective a lot of research was in, involved so how can we move forward with um, implementing those um, tasks that were recommended both on a short term and a long term phase so we can address a lot of these issues that are being brought up from by you all by um, many of our residents as well as um, our business and state commercial stakeholders in downtown as well so um, our board is going to be addressing that we have a board meeting on Monday so we'll be looking at um, how we can be part of that solution so thank you thank you what else seeing no one public comment is closed moving on to consent agenda uh, um, as amended approval I make a motion. motion to approve the consent agenda as amended second Call the roll, please. Mr. Walston. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mayor Petrolia. Yes. Mr. Frankel. Yes. Ms. Cassell. Yes, thank you. All right, so we got a few uh, items taken off. We'll start with 6A. <laughs> you. I'm sorry, 6E, <laughs> which is a 7, a double A now. And this is the motion to approve amendment number three for the memorandum of understanding between the Delray Beach Chamber of Education and the Delray Beach, Florida, bus shelters who took that that was you right I think I pulled that one okay. yeah so I just wanted to catch up on where we are with this we started the program well first of all uh, and do we know how much money has gone to the schools through this program um, mr. chart is here I think he'd be the best person to be able to answer that Can you come up Good evening, all of you. Uh, the answer to the question is that we distribute the money at the education breakfast every year. And this year, we gave to each of the eight schools $500. That was the amount of money that had been collected up to that date. And that was for how many shelters, if you don't mind? It's, uh, that would be roughly about three or four shelters. So I just, this was a pilot program, and I like the program, but my concern is we, the, the goal was not to have our, L, L, our LDRs don't want our bus shelters being used for marketing. So the question is, what is the plan with this program? Does it end? How, what are we doing? Are, is the plan to amend our LDRs? Because I don't know that I'm amenable to that. I love that the schools are getting money, and I would almost argue, like, we could contribute that and keep our shelters clean. I don't know if people agree, if they like the way the shelters look as an advertisement, maybe if the advertisement is smaller and the artwork is bigger. I'm just not sure that I love it. I love the concept of giving to our schools. I appreciate what you're doing, but I wanted to have that conversation. If I could comment on that. Um, Thank you. The, the pilot was for three. The, this city commission expanded that. I'm say there's 13, right? Or 18. 18. Yes. Okay. And that was 15 additional to the original three pilots. 
and it's officially not advertising. We have been very scrupulous on that issue. It looks like it, though, don't it you does. agree? Yeah. Well, uh, I would, uh, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and I no disrespect, because I, I do appreciate it, and I think it's a great idea, but I just don't like the looks of the bus shelters as advertisements. If I may, uh, beauty is a little bit in the eye of the beholder, right? right. No, it's not about beauty. And, and one of the, there's a number of design guidelines that were established from the get-go on this. One is no flashing lights, uh, no advertising, Thank goodness. Uh, no color. It was supposed to be straightforward, no. simple, and really focus on the schools and with the symbols what those schools represented and honor the schools and what they do. Okay, so let me just say this. I'm going to Thank kick you. in here because they are absolutely advertising and the schools are being thanked on the side that you don't see. Okay, so if it was really truly about the schools, you would say thank you to the schools on the side that you're driving by. Instead, what you have is an advertisement on the back side, the other side of it, you have the thank you for the schools. That's the side you don't see. In addition to that, I have to tell you there's a couple of them that basically haven't even had the, the previous whatever it is taken off and you have, it's, it's kind yeah. of a half done job and so they're not looking good I mean just be honest with you I'm not impressed I, I some of them are mm -hmm. and I also think that there's multiple I, I'm pretty sure there's multiple people doing this around the city it's not just one advertisement per I think there's multiple. I'm not sure, but it, I, maybe it's me. I maybe I'm just driving by the same well, one, and I just. I'm think. glad you raised that question. Yeah. That was a, the artwork that you're referring to has probably been on those bus shelters, about 20 years. It goes way back. I understand. And to take that artwork off would be very expensive to someone. Okay. Well, I'm gonna be honest with you. If it's if it's gonna look like that, like like the it's because it's half peeled off already doesn't look good it can be taken off it will cost it would be about a day's worth of work to scrape those off and well, I mean it's I don't think it's gonna cost the city is it gonna be your project it depends on how you look at it if you want to net that out from the revenue gained obviously um, it would cost the schools because the twenty five hundred dollars eight hundred of that goes to putting the wrap on and, and cleaning up the shelters. The remainder goes to the schools. So maybe maybe all the advertising we're doing, maybe you increase the advertisement to take it off. I'm we're not talking a, hand, uh, a few of those bus shelters, because now yeah. you've sold all 18, correct? Yes. So all 18 are sold. They're two-year contracts, they're 2,500. They're one-year contracts. They're one-year contracts, they're 2,500, but they can be renewed. And when they're renewed. 2,500 for the two years or one year? One year. One year. Okay. And you can renew it, and then the second year when you renew it, there's no cost for the wrap that comes out of it, meaning that full $2,500 in the second year from each one of the bus shelters times 18 bus shelters, that's a lot of money for our schools. That means that each school's going from a $500 check to closer to a four or five thousand dollar check and as long as those continue to be renewed and from mm -hmm. what I understand from the foundation there's now a waiting list so even if someone doesn't renew it we have a new sponsor coming in and only one panel has to be replaced because the rest of the panels are advertising the school right, you just replace and the our and our um, we right. heart our schools campaign which the messaging is in each one right the model that we utilize for this is the same model that schools utilize for advertising banners if they're following the rules each one of those banners that hang on the fences and I'm sure we've all seen them on on the roadway yes. if they're following the rules they're supposed to say thank you then have a name or logo right it's all supposed to be in one color no web addresses no phone numbers so it, it's been a standard that's been you guys are do you want to jump in because no no I was okay. just so there's I there's do. been a standard can, that's been you it's Lee is a phone number I have to there's, tell you there, that's, that's the name number. of the company though okay but that's you know, a phone so number it's the name of the company uh, like what do you what are you gonna you know what are you gonna do so um, but it's a standard that's been used across our county for a long time, so that's the standard we used here. If you have feedback that you would rather see the thank you on another panel and the school logo on another panel, which I think depending on what bus shelter you're at, it, they, it's kind of different because some of them have more panels than others, then give that feedback. But this is a successful program. The foundation 
is utilizing our bus shelters. They're being rewrapped. Most of them did not look good. Now they're clean. Now they're being cleaned up. The ones that could have the artwork that wasn't baked into them has been completely removed, with a nice one color design that advertises our schools, thanks the sponsor, and raises money for our foundation, which is just recurring revenue. It's fifty thousand or more if we start wrapping more bus shelters every single year going into our school. How is this not a a, a win? Yeah. So what I'm trying to ascertain... May, may I just answer the sure. second question that the mayor asked? Yes, um, absolutely. Each one of those designs, as per the direction of this commission, is approved by the city. And that's approved from the city manager's office. It's mm. approved by Public Works. It's approved by the sponsor. It's approved by the school. So it goes through a process, and if you are not in favor of the results, we can definitely change that. But the other thing to say on that is generally it's positioned by the flow of traffic and how, how much time and how many eyeballs are going to be seen on it. And the largest space is for the school. Okay, so right. what I was going to say is that that really does just answer the question that I had which is basically it is an advertisement right. as you're coming down the street the side that you're seeing on al almost er every bus shelter that I, f I pass it isn't the school it's the it's the advertisement for that particular person who's paying for it that business I get that that's how they're that, that's how you're drawing interest it makes sense you know because mm -hmm. it's not a very expensive way to be able to get your name out there over and over and over again kind of like a, a bench on the side of the road that they used to have those big sure. signs on yeah. but it would seem to me that it would be more pleasurable or I would feel it was a bit more in the spirit of things to have that advertisement on the far side mm -hmm. and have yeah. the advertisement for the schools because it's all about the schools on the side that the traffic is going by. And listen, you can do a reverse so that as you're coming down, you can see it all as well. But the real issue here is the schools. That's what we were sure. told. Mm -hmm. This is something that we have decided to take a stab at for, mm -hmm. you know, to try something different. And, you know, I'm just putting it out there that what we thought was not going to be advertisement, I think we can all kind of agree up here, it is advertisement. And that's kind of so what it's So where do against. our LDRs stand, though? Because our LDRs suggest that that's not something we do. We did this as a trial program, and now we're going against our own LDRs, and we're talking about, you're talking about a year and then renewing. So you're talking, this isn't a trial program. This is a two-and-a-half to three-year program now. So yeah, so it was when it, the MOU was initially approved, it was a one-year agreement with two additional options to renew for additional, so for a total of three years. So the LDRs, they don't allow off-site, um, off-premises advertising. Um, candidly, when, when this was brought before the commission, the commission approved it, essentially you're instructing staff not to enforce that portion of the LDRs specifically to the bus shelters. So yes, ideally we should have a change in the code if, if this is something that we want to pursue. Um, that makes it cleaner. It makes it um, you know more um, more open and you know obvious to anybody who's reading our code to understand why we're allowing this. Mm -hmm. um, but you know I, w I would await that direction. I would not be amenable to changing the code. So I don't know what you do going forward. I don't know about the the renewing after a year because I think once you start doing this for three years you're essentially changing the codes without changing the code essentially change the code so you want to take this a specific a program. Take a program. Commissioner Johnson thank you mayor um, I would have to agree with the mayor I've tried several times to figure out who which school rather is being promoted because I'm going one direction I can only see that one panel when I'm going the other direction I don't have time to look across the street to see whatever is on that panel. And you said there's more than one or two panels. I think most of our bus shelters only have three. You have the side panels and you have the back panel. Mm -hmm. Usually you cannot read the back panel. So even if you put the school information there, you won't see it. So it's really one dimensional and the school, and I did not get out of my card to see which school it was, but I can tell you which company did the wrap because that's all I can see. Well, I think the initial design was right. to give the schools the biggest space. 
two panels versus three uh, versus one, and I mean, all of this is something that should the commission want to change the directions, we we can do. Uh, as I say, this is all something that has gone forward with complete approval every every step of the way. It's generated a lot of money for our schools, and it's discretionary money that they can do whatever they want with. Okay. It's not, it doesn't have strings uh, tied. Okay, so we asked you how much this, this generated, and you said it was $500 per school, so that's not a tremendous amount. I get that you n didn't have but three, maybe four shelters that you're basing that on. Yes. I get that. But at this point in time, it hasn't generated a lot of money for the schools because the schools haven't received that. Is that correct? The question was how much was given to the schools right. in August. Right, but you said you've generated a lot for the schools. They haven't received that yet, correct? Correct. Okay, thank you. Because the check is given to them at the education breakfast. I understand. I'm all just eight, saying. All 18 are spoken for with a waiting list. Mm -hmm. And by the way, these were wrapped, three of them were wrapped exactly how they're wrapped all around our city, and we approved it moving forward. It's not like any of this is a surprise where are the logos placed, where three were, not only did we see mock-ups, but then three were physically wrapped as a pilot program for all of us to go see and drive by. Um, and, and, and by the way, the, the section that the school gets is two to three panels. So the back panel of all the bus shelters, because they're not square, the rectangle is two to three panels. And that's why they gave that space to the schools. The, that's correct. Yeah. It's two to three panels make up the, the size back, of it. Make up the back. Because so it's a but, but so they I'm, were giving the schools driving two by. to three times. I, I totally hear you. I hear you. But they were giving the schools two to three times the space, more space, but not maybe not the best spot. I, I completely hear you. This is all feedback that obviously ideally would have been given when we wrapped the bus bus shelters, had the pilot program, had three out there for all of us to look at. But now that we've seen them around the city, it's a different look I think when it's you see I think it's I think it's great I think it's great feedback so that when someone does renew the bus shelter, that, that adjustment has to be made. Or when a new vendor, a new sponsor comes in and writes that twenty five hundred dollar checks to to our schools, that the placement for the school is gonna be on the, you know, featured side or however you want to word that. But I mean, this is a program taking our bus shelters who no one paid attention to for 20 years. They had, yeah. they had art on them for 20 years, baked in. Ugly, so, ugly art. Baked in so, so, so much into the glass that you can't scrape it off. And now we're utilizing a program that has been used at schools across our county, probably across our nation for a long time, which is thanking sponsorships <laughs> to raise $50,000. And by the way, with the bus, the bus shelters that we have, this could be $100,000 repeatable every single year to our schools. Just to Commissioner B Boylston's point, Commissioner if, if I may. Uh, how this is even a question. The, uh, with the, those that we have in place now, we are generating 50,000. If you extend the memorandum of understanding to include 30 bus shovels, it'll be $75,000 a year. Okay, so may hold I, up just I, a second okay. because I, the Vice Mayor was waiting. Thank you. I, sorry. Thank you very much for the explanation. I guess what I'm having an issue with is I can tell you who the advertisers are. I can't tell you who the schools are. Yeah, I, don't, I can't either. And to me, you know, for, I've said it not on this issue, but many other issues, that I don't want to see Delray turn into Coney Island. Mm -hmm. To yeah. me, this kind of creeps. gets to that. They're beautifully done. They're very, very nice. But I kind of agree with my colleagues that they're clear advertisements. Mm -hmm. And if we want to go that avenue, it's a whole different story, but I don't. Mm -hmm. So I kind of agree with mm -hmm. some of my colleagues up here. Can I make a suggestion yes. um, that we table this and have a, a, a more of a discussion on this moving forward? Because I don't know that we're going to resolve this here. We're already long in the, the meeting. We haven't even started <laughs> kind of like this is the first. See, you can, you can defer this. Um, Mr. Charge still has till May 3rd of 2023 um, with this agreement. Um, he does have 18 shelters already, so it would just essentially mean that he couldn't seek any more sponsorships until okay. such time as we bring this back before right. you. But I think it's it's worth uh, at, at least having conversations with staff and understanding um, how we might be able to. He is very he's, he is very diligent. He does staff pr 
you know, staff approves these. Yeah, no, I understand. So if the direction from the commission is maybe right before, in April, we'll bring this back to you. Okay. We can work with Mr. Chard on a mock-up that yep. might be acceptable based on the comments made today. And then going forward, the additional mm -hmm. shelters will, yeah. will comply with, with right. those mandates. I think that that would be a good idea. Oh, is that yeah. acceptable? Yes, ma'am. Just one more, one more thing. I happened to see one of our freebies. Mm -hmm. It's no longer freebies. It was covered with. Oh, no, it's well. Because when did that happen? No, we, we agreed Please, to it. Uh, we agreed to it. That was part uh, of the contract. All it. over it. Yeah. Contract and allows for that. Yeah, that's what yeah. I call advertising. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. we need to yeah. take another look yeah. at yeah. it. We didn't do it initially, but yeah, then all of a sudden, yeah. the, the 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 price of that for the public went mm -hmm. so far up. Mm -hmm. This is a whole different situation. Yeah. This is basically generating money for a great cause, but that wasn't. That's actually a transportation, and it was extremely expensive, yeah. and it jumped up. And the way that we were able to offset some of that cost to be able to continue it and expand it was to do the advertising and it was a hard thing for us to do but you know again we want to make sure that we're providing the service yeah I'm glad I didn't have any responsibility for that one <laughs> well Madam Mayor very good thank you I'd like to recommend deferral to the April 4th meeting yep. so moved. give a second second okay. call the roll please thank you. Johnson yes Mayor Petrolia? Yes. Mr. Frankel? Yes. Ms. Cassell? Yes. Mr. Boston? All right, we'll see you then. Yes. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, moving on to uh, 6K1, which is now 7BB. This is an appealable, pulled also, I believe, by uh, Commissioner Cassell? No? Uh, yeah, there was an issue regarding pharmacies. Can we just have somebody help me out with that one? Thank you. I'm sorry, I don't know. I don't have my computer in front of me. It was, so a, it was before the Planning and Zoning Board. Um, it was a 7-0 decision, um, and it essentially sought to a similarity of use um, with the definition of pharmacy, and I believe the um, MROC zoning area. Mm -hmm. yes. May I, before we go any further, we did we not request that these appealables be put back on the agenda? It's well, if we haven't, I think it's a good uh, thing to do. Just to put it on the agenda. That you can see the actual addresses like yes, we did before. Yes, like we used to. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. please. All Thank right, you. So that adjustment, um, the format you have now works more on the digital where you can click through and see the entire mm -hmm. package. But if it's not working, then we'll, we'll adjust. Um, so I think it's important to know that the code says when you determine a similarity of use, there's different ways it's applied. But in this case, um, you're determining that the use is that's presented can be established in a specific zoning district by action of the Planning and Zoning Board. This isn't a traditional pharmacy like a CVS or a Walgreens, which actually you know would be allowed in that district. It's more it has more of a mail order fulfillment arrangement, and the buildings that exist there now actually are quite suitable for this type of use. It doesn't have it doesn't rely on as much walk-in. Um, does it um, and so the board impact may space and distance between pharmacies in the MROC the same way it would? In, in other words, <coughs> is it like you can't have so many in a particular area or none of that? So you're just saying allow that use there. There's no other uh, effect. Unintended consequences now. No. No, no unintended no. consequences. Yeah, I did want to add, I, I did speak with Mr. Schiller during the break, and he did remind me, and I wanted to let you know, that they don't have a DEA license, so there's a certain level of narcotics that they cannot yeah. discuss. Okay. But, okay, so wait a second, because I watched that meeting, right. and I'm glad you pulled that off because I didn't even realize it was on, on the uh, appealables. But they can get that, and then they can have the DEA. Uh, they can, it, it wasn't, this is, doesn't prohibit them from doing that. They don't correct? currently have it. They don't currently have it, which means that what we're doing is, is we're opening up the potential of someone else coming in and being able to do the same thing, but also having narcotics as being a distributable I item, no? I'd have to look at the definition. Does the definition restrict? I don't think it did. I'm trying to remember what the board actually did, but I mean, look, at the end of the day, a lot of us have insurance. The insurance we have for the city right now relies, has an express scripts method of filling mm -hmm. your prescriptions. And so, you know, that's, just part of how a lot of retail services are evolving to right you know Here, here's my concern and this is what i was when i was watching this on the the pnz board you know when you have these like drug stores they're usually on the corner well lit uh people driving by eyes on on these you know places 
all around. This is kind of off the beaten path, kind of back behind things in a area that isn't as well lit, well um, driven by. And I'm just wondering, are, and it's not that a, a pharmacy wouldn't, couldn't open up there, they could, but I just wonder if we're creating a new type of business that could be problematic because it's not saying that we can't have those, mm -hmm. you know, those narcotic prescription drugs being sent out and mail ordered out from this particular place, but I worry that we're maybe moving in a different direction in with something that could be an issue. I, I don't know, and, and that's why I guess I, I when I was yeah. listening to it, it was troublesome to me because I know where this is going to go, and I'm wondering, well, people, other people are going to know what's going on in there if they get if they have their narcotics ability, the ability to be able, and I can't remember there was a what? number to it, but anyway, to sell, fifteen to fifteen percent. So is that what you're talking about? You're typically seeing the lit up CVSs and Walgreens because they are trying to attract you to come in and buy other things, right? And so it's more of a shop. Right. This really is a more of a, a sales and distribution, which is not that it's not allowed in the city because those types of uses certainly could be accommodated in some of our industrial or you know light industrial districts, things like that. It's just that MROC is very prescriptive on the kind of uses it wants to the point that we're now looking again at the corridor because you know we're starting to have challenges. Okay, with so that. you're saying that so this, is this was just can this use go in MROC? Gotcha. So it's 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 allowed in other areas, but yes. not necessarily yeah. in MROC. Yes. For whatever reason, I, I got it. I don't what think reason? that what you're raising is 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 not important. I mean, of course it is, and if as it's it relates to already. security, it's it's more that it's if they are a legal licensed pharmacy for sales and distribution without the walk-in clientele, that's the part that was hanging them up with MROC. Mm -hmm. And because I believe the definition I'm looking it up right now, but the definition of pharmacy does have limitation, so it would be automatically applied to. Why wasn't it included in MROC? Is there a reason, do you think, or it's just an because oversight? I think MROC aspires to have, um, I mean, it had research and development uses. I think mm -hmm. that goes back to scripts and all of that coming into Florida at some point in the past. Um, business, office, um, residential, <coughs> all of that. It's the cleaner uses. When something is a retail distribution, you're not getting that walkable shop right. thing that that, that mm -hmm. district is aspiring to that, have that at that part of Congress so, Avenue. Can I just read it sure. for you? So no more than 15% of the total number of prescriptions sold within a 30-day period can be derived from the sale of Schedule II controlled substances as listed in Florida Statute 893.03. Right. So the definition has a limitation okay. that I think you're concerned about. Yes, and that those regulations and the enforcement of them go well beyond our city's local code enforcement. Right. So I, I, I'm not concerned. Schiller's here concerned. if you have any questions. I, Sorry, no. I'm just, a little out of breath. Okay. I mean, oh my gosh, she sprinted over. He's out of breath, yes. I out of breath. Did. Oh, Look at him. I apologize. It's gone. I have a question. It's not his. I don't know who's. I, Sorry, I, I just wanted to okay, right. see if there were unintended consequences. No, but we have to be careful because we're not we're not gonna you know have the appeal heard now. So I know, no, I know. questions. I know. And I, it might okay. not negate well, the need I mean, for an appeal. We, we can we can decline the appeal if we want to. Correct. Okay. So go ahead, um, Commissioner. Yes, um, we the the situation is that we they passed that they would allow this. To be a part of our MROC, is that the request was to for us? It's called similarity of use determination, so that because it's allowed in other zoning districts, they they wanted it to be allowed in MROC. Okay. So the same definition, and it's limited to MROC. It's not going to be citywide. It's specific to MROC that pharmacies would now be permitted. Something someone said about being limited to thirty. Mm -hmm. There's a certain percentage. Who's tracking that? That's a good question. I mean, I would imagine it would be code enforcement would be charged with that. Okay. It would be a. But I mean, they would have to, they have to get the licenses would, would come from the state of Florida, right? So, I mean, it's not. It, it sounds very similar to our um, Airbnbs. They're out there and they're doing whatever they want to do. Um, the state does not like us limiting, stopping, counting. So I think this is a slippery slope. The state preempts us on Airbnb. So that's that's completely that's we're not preempted here. No. We're not preempted. Not, so not yet. It, it would be they would be operating contrary to their approval. They'd have to come before the code enforcement board and explain. But 
you know, you have to trust the process, right? That's all I can say. If the city became aware of it, just like we've done with noise, just like we've done with other things, we bring people before the, the magistrate and, and we deal with it in that forum. But, you know, I don't think you can just deny something just because you're worried that, you know, our staff is not going to be able to enforce something. Well, I'm not worried about staff. I'm worrying, worrying about there being a problem. It happens further on down the road. We are seeing that it's happening. We have such a history in the city of Delray Beach with substance abuse for years. But I this, just, it feels like it's I know, another. But this particular one doesn't have the narcotics uh, part of it. No. So yet. just, right. But I know that we can't, like, worry whether or not it was gonna, it's going to happen. I'm okay. just telling you. And you suggest that they not have the narcotics no. at all? No. Okay. Because all, all we're doing is looking at a definition <clears throat> right. and applying it into a new zoning district. Okay. So, no, we can't. That's I don't think what else. she intended was that code couldn't do it. It's just do we want to ask them to do additional things. It's just things. one more thing on their plate. And I understood what you meant. I agree. Okay, so are we, uh, this would be a motion to uh, uh, pull it then, right? To so we, there were a lot of them on there. And so um, I, think, I think you should vote on this one specifically, yes. and then you can do a collective motion for the balance of the appealable land use items. Sorry. Is the inclination to appeal this? We said no. We said yes. What did they say? I think we need to figure out. I'm, I, I'm okay board. with it. Yes, the Planning and Zoning Board voted 7-0 to approve this right. use. So I guess my question is, if, the, if you're inclined to just accept what the Planning Board did and, and move along, then we could just do a collective motion to approve yep. otherwise if somebody is going to take it, it, it out you have to motion to approve second okay sorry but that's for all of them yes yes okay, okay. Yes. Yes. all right call the roll mayor petrolia yes mr frankel yes Ms. cassell yes mr boylston yes. Ms. johnson yes okay sorry mr schiller sorry to pull go back you to out of whatever it was you were doing it's probably <laughs> yeah. having dinner watching tv all right so we're now at 7 cc which i think i pulled i just want a um the ability to be able to put this out in the public eye we have an agreement um, with the palm beach county board of county commissioners to allow the city of delray beach uh, water customers to receive financial assistance through the low-income household water assistance program and I just want to kind of put that out there because I know that there are people who in our community that basically struggle with water um, bills and uh, just if there is anybody that um, on the staff very briefly to explain what actually happens and who, who would be who would be able to get this and how did they go about doing that very briefly Mr. Hajimiri, if you would, please. Do you, do you know, Mr. Hajimiri, how, how someone would go about getting this and who they would contact? Would they just call us? No. Good evening. Uh, this is an arrangement that they have to make with the Palm Beach County uh, Department of uh, Community Action Program. Okay. And uh, through that, uh, then it provides for City of Del Rey Beach to accept payment from Palm Beach County assisting uh, such uh, in need uh, citizens. So yes, do we so. do that already? Do we have people in our city that basically are getting assistance? I do not have that information. Okay. Madam, I do not know that. Yes, yes. So upon approval this evening, the thinking yes. as of tomorrow is that we will begin with the Department of Communications and the Customer Service right. section to advertise and market the fact that this opportunity is available. So we hope to be able to accomplish that beginning this week upon approval by the City Commission. Okay. Well, it, yeah, go ahead. Go. Yes. This item after approval by, uh, by city commission is going to go before the Board of County Commission. Oh, okay. So the, 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 effect, gotcha. yes, the effective date is yeah. going to be when they do that, and the plan was to immediately notify or, or prior to that our uh, utility billing staff. Mm -hmm. So in case if someone calls and have an issue, maybe we provide them the information right. and also put them in our website. Okay, very good. Yeah. So this is a new program that we're actually coming on board with. Yes, that's correct. Got it. Thank Motion you. Mayor, you ask a question. I think the answer is... I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> you ask a question. Do we have any programs? No, I was asking wait. about this program. Do we have anybody that's currently in this program? It's a new program that's coming out okay. and that has to go back now before the, once okay. we accept it, then we have to give it to the county exactly. commission, then they have to accept it, and then, then we can go ahead and roll it out and let people know. And I that. thought your question was, do we have any programs now in the city? And I believe the answer would probably be no. Okay, 
for the for the low income for the low um, order, income if you not. if you owe yeah probably not not under this program because no, no, i asked under the program. and they said no this is the first time that um, just under any program in the city is there any additional help that the city has initiated obviously this is going to be the first time that we're getting assistance for people who cannot pay their water bill for whatever the reason low income they qualify the answer is no delray beach does not have anything and this once we approve it will go under the auspices of the county that's all yes. i was asking yes, ma'am, and it's for two years all right very good so, so we have a motion and a second call the roll please mr frankel yes Ms. cassell yes thank mr. you mr boston yes Ms. johnson yes Mayor Petrolia. Yes, I don't think I'd pulled it off if I knew I was going to be pulling teeth here. But anyway, <laughs> I just wanted to make sure we were putting it up there. All right, so we're at 6, 6G, which is now 7DD, and this begins, I believe, the, the massive pull-offs by my colleague, Shirley Johnson. I only did how many? Two? It's both no, no, I have DD. 7DD. 6G is 7DD, uh, and this is the uh, resolution 24-23. Right. I just would like to have an understanding and maybe it was in the backup and I didn't get to do it. Is this one of those, um, first of all, it's a lot of money. Thank you, federal government. I think we should be up and down the avenue tooting our horns. Uh, congratulations to everyone who was a part of it. Are there any strings attached? Okay, can I say something real quick? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, cause I'm on the TPA board. Mm -hmm. There were a couple of items that Delray Beach was pushed off. Uh, the, this was one of them that were supposed to start in this next cycle. Okay, next cycle wait, being like this year, like this uh, 2023 this year. to 2024 is where that we we were actually getting the money to start going down the path of doing these TPA um, partnership projects, and because they had a bigger project, I believe it was State Road Seven or something um, that took over, they pushed us off. So what this is doing is getting. This is phase one. Phase one. Okay, very good. So this is we're moving forward then. Yes. Motion to approve. Wonderful. Very good. I just was the reason I was asking Second. is because Second. this Second. Not the discussion. Thank you very much. Um, these explanations and maybe there's something in the body again. It doesn't give those explanations and it's good for the public to know because a lot of people are saying we're not getting anything. We're not doing anything. This. Rather than putting it on consent and nobody even paying attention to it, we are doing things for our infrastructure. Absolutely. And now it's on the record. We've discussed it. First phase, how many years? Five, six, ten years later, we should have some kind of evidence of this. This one is, um, excuse me, Missy Barletto, Director of Public Works. This one is actually to accept the grant dollars to begin construction in the, in the coming year. So this one will be under under construction very soon, as will the next one. Phase one. This is phase one from um, Atlantic Avenue to Lake Ida Road. Phase two, as the mayor was um, was speaking about earlier, is pushed out one year. Because we got put behind some of them. Right, projects. I understand. And this is also an early warning to those who travel these routes. Start looking for an alternative because you're going to be yep. impacted by it. That's okay, all. We had a, a motion by um, Commissioner Cassell, second by, I believe it was, uh, yep, mm -hmm. Adam Frankel. Are we going to be able to vote on one at a time? Yeah, I'm, one at a time. Okay. This is for 6G. Ms. Cassell? Yes. Mr. Boylston? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Petrolia? Yes. Mr. Frankel? Yes. Okay, now we need an approval, I mean a motion for resolution number 25-23. Motion to approve. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Boylston? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mayor Petrolia? Yes. Mr. Frankel? Yes. Ms. Cassell? Yes. All right. We're, we're now at proclamations. We've got three of them that we're going to be talking about, and this is uh, 6J1, which is now 7FF, observation of President's Day. I thought that was 6L1. Um, no, I think it, we're on 6, 6L1. Oh, I had J. I'm sorry. 6L1. Okay, 6L1 so it's L1, L2, and L3. Oh, correct. I'm confused. <laughs> adding to the list <laughs> okay so 7ff is now 6l1 so that's what we're on and this is the bid of uh, resolution number 26-23 you also pulled that yes sir. yes i did mayor okay. i'm 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 being again not understanding this is quite a lot of money and i understand we've already begun the contract is that correct 
Uh, good evening, Mayor and Commissioner Sam Mita, Director of Parks and Recreation. Uh, to be clear, I, I don't think that's accurate. We um, do have contracted services with this vendor, JMEC, um, but for different sections of the city. So the, this is the next section um, that was up for bid. Uh, there was a RFP process, three bidders, and this was the, the choice from the committee. When does it begin? Um, once we approve this, we go through the signing of the contract and get a purchase order and as soon as possible. Very good. Motion, Motion to, to approve. approve. Second. Call Thank you. I'm excited about this. Thank you. Sam. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mayor Petrolia. Yes. Mr. Frankel. Yes. Ms. Cassell. Yes. Mr. Boylston. Yes. Okay, 6L2, approval of resolution 32-23. That was also approved by me. Mm -hmm. um, again, a lot of money without a lot of understanding. We are contracting with an extra and this also, I think, goes into 6L3. I don't know if you pulled that one also. I did. Um, Mr. Mita? Yes, uh, you, you were kind of right on there. Um, this is for security services for events like we have next week with the tennis tournament, uh, future tennis tournaments, holiday uh, Christmas tree where we hire security, and other, other events like concerts and so on. Um, and the reason you have two, like you mentioned, back-to-back uh, -back is one is a primary and one is a backup service. So what that allows us... Where we've struggled in the past is some of the smaller vendors can't take the entire responsibility of the tennis tournament, for example, where there's a lot of shifts where park staff has to come in and fill shifts throughout the events because they don't have the available number of people to fill those roles. Um, the bigger companies that you would get for the Miami Dolphins or in a stadium like that don't bid on the smaller project jobs, and then the smaller companies can't fill all the roles. So there needed to be a backup option for us. Um, also, uh, with these different uh, security companies, sometimes they get other events where they don't have the personnel. So one vendor wouldn't really satisfy all of our needs, which is why you see two vendors for, for that operation. And uh, this is something we've been doing for some reason every year, new contract, new contract. This puts it together where we were able to bid it out for a multiple years, so it doesn't have to come before you uh, year after year and event after event. My main question probably would be, um, we have events that the vendor can't afford to have the event, so we're supplementing the event? Um, different, the answer tennis, for, the yeah, different answer for different events. Um, part of our contractual obligation to the tennis tournament is that we provide the security for that operation, and it's much more cost-effective to provide um, this type of security service for maybe checking credentials to go into a player lounge rather than hiring the police department to you know, man a door, for example. And that's what many of what these do. Our police department is great. They do all the security on the perimeter for any entrance and exit for personnel to the site. But internally, all of that security personnel is done through this contract. So that's part of the contract. The other events that you mentioned are city events for like the Christmas tree village and so on. So the city event has to provide the security for our own events. Can I just say something? So typically you don't see these because it's, and thank you, Sam, because this was a big problem every year. We were doing these last minute purchase orders for this, for this type of service. So now we're doing a long-term contract. We're using two agencies because, you know, of the personnel issues, but this is actually a better practice, right? We're doing a long-term contract using what we need out of the contract so that we don't have to, you know, do an, like a very quick purchase order, which might actually cost more money because of the timing of it. So this is actually a, a good practice that we're doing here. Fine, except I'd like to understand a little bit better. We are giving a lot of money to, I'm picking on them because they are the biggest. Um, well, do they? If you're talking about the Delray Open, that's contractual, so we don't have a choice in that. We've, we've already promised to do that. It's part of the contract. There's nothing we can do to change that. The other events are city-sponsored events, like the Christmas tree lighting. That's our event. So, so this isn't necessarily for something from a special events perspective? That's correct. Is that correct, correct. Sam? That is absolutely okay, correct. So this is for city-sponsored events and then the contractually obligated Delray Beach Open. Okay, it's city-sponsored events only because I'm going to make a comment later about something. Understood, and that's, that's separate and apart from this. Okay. okay, I have a question before we move on because I'm noticing something on both of these. It says, and first of all, I want to find out, is it stacked? Are we going to need um, 800000 in that or is it the maximum is going to be about four hundred? Um, for the year, I mean, four hundred thousand. It looks like, 81. I mean, I'm sorry, eighty-one and eighty-one. So, in other words, is it is it one hundred and sixty thousand a year that we're going to be utilizing, or is it more like going to be eighty-one? But we just want to make sure that we've got enough in each of those 
areas to be able to utilize. That's spot on. It's much okay. closer to the 80. Okay. I mean, it could bump over to a little. Okay. And, then, and then the 81 times 3 does not equal 406,000, and the 81 times 3 does not equal 409. So what, why is there a different discrepancy there? Uh, it, it may See just... what I'm saying? Um, it says it's a three-year contract for $81,321 per year, and the total amount for the three years is 406606 May I explain it? Yes, you may. All right. Initial year term, February 2023 to February 2024, 81312 2024-2025, same amount. Three, two, one. And there's an initial year, too. Then there's two renewal year one in year two, so in the backup, it's a five-year. It's a five-year commitment. Okay, so you're so five actually, times that amount. Thank you. So yeah, basically, the, the quick answer is you've got typo on my end in the title uh, because it, but we put in the whole number. Gotcha. For fifth, fourth, and it's fifth. actually yeah. accurate for five years. Right. Well, we call it a three. Years, resolution thirty-two dash twenty-three. Second. Okay. Anything else? Seeing no. no one. Thank you. Call the roll, please. Mayor Petrolia. Yes. Mr. Frankel. Yes. Ms. Cassell. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Motion to approve resolution number 33-23. Second. Call the roll, please. Okay. Mr. Frankel. Yes. Ms. Cassell. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mayor Petrolia. Yes. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you for the explanation, and it looks like we're actually moving on to our regular agenda. Yay. And we have a quasi-judicial starting off, so, and there's a couple more on our agenda, so I'm going to go ahead and read the quasi-judicial rules into the record. This... This hearing shall be conducted in accordance with quasi-judicial rules. The applicant and the city shall be allowed 20 minutes each to present their case. The public shall be allowed to speak for three minutes each or a maximum of six minutes if the person present pre, person presents an organization, I'm sorry, if the person represents an organization or a group of people who are present but agree not to speak. The city commission, staff, and the applicant may be allowed to cross-examine a witness. The city and the applicant will be allowed to offer rebuttal testimony. The decision to approve or deny an application or appeal may not be legally made upon personal views or as to whether a project is a good project or not. It may not be, nor may a decision be based on the number of citizens who support or oppose a particular project. The law requires that all decisions must be made on the basis of whether the project meets the required law, the comprehensive plan, and the land development regulations. At this stage, if there's anybody who is here that's going to be speaking on... 7A, 7B, 7C, please stand, raise your right hand, and be sworn in. By the authority vested in me as a notary of the state of Florida, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Okay, our first um, 7A, disclosure. 7A, B, and C are the same properties, so you may want to just take them collectively. Okay, great. So what we'll do is this is um, for the property located at uh, 553 Harbor Court and 526 North Ocean Boulevard. So if there's any yes. disclosure for ex parte communication, now would be the time. Let's start with uh, Commissioner Cassell. Not that I'm aware of. <coughs> Maybe what's on the server. Okay. No, not aware. No. No. no, and none for me as well, unless there's something on the server. So at this point, let's go ahead and have the project file entered into the record, please. Good, after, good evening, Anthea Genotis, Development Services Director, and I'd like to enter file 2022-280 into the record. These are three different um, easement abandonments under consideration. They each have their own resolution number, and the applicant is here with an overview of the request. Very good. Well, we welcome the applicant up. Thank you for your patience. Yes, thank you, and good evening, uh, Madam Mayor, Commissioners, Mr. City Manager, and Madam City Attorney. I'm Nicholas Ritornado. I'm here with McMillan and Stanley. Uh, we are the designated agent on each of these three abandonment easement applications. Uh, we were brought in in about August of 2022 just to clean up some different issues with the property, and these three easements were, were three of those issues there. Uh, resolution number 34-23 is as to a 12-foot utility easement that runs east and west through uh, more or less the middle of the property. 35-23 is as to a water easement that runs east and west across the north end of the property. And 36-23 is as to a utility easement that runs uh, north to south across more or less the middle of the property. Uh, as to all three of these uh, abandoned easements and resolutions, uh, the city engineer, city utilities, city attorney's office, uh, and planning and zoning have all uh, approved us to this point. 
Um, it, no utility services through the city will be affected and there's no requirement for additional uh, easements to be created for any of these abandonments. Uh, as additional notes to all three easements here, AT&T, Comcast, FPO, and FPU have each confirmed that their services will not be affected as well. Uh, so there are no services through, through any provider here that are located in any of these three easements. Uh, as to 35-23, which is the 12-foot water easement that runs uh, across the north end of the property, there was an additional requirement to add a utility easement granted to Comcast. They do have a service box located on the north, northwest end of the property. Uh, we have granted that easement to Comcast and recorded that instrument in OR book 34041, page 1619, public records of Palm Beach County, Florida. Uh, additionally, there used to be a water main and services located within this easement. Those have been moved uh, approximately 2016. A uh, new water easement deed was recorded and that new water easement runs across the south end of the property instead and all of those water services were redirected that way. As I mentioned, there is nothing uh, else located in this uh, easement except for that Comcast box, which we have addressed. And then as to 36-23, just one additional comment on this one. Uh, this is a very old utility easement from 1965 that was granted explicitly, uh, only to the city, sorry, only to the city there. Uh, this easement was actually previously abandoned uh, in resolution number 84 dash 97 recorded in OR book 10 107 page 1150 uh, December 1st 1997 uh, this easement happened to reappear on title searches as we were working through this so out of abundance out of an abundance of caution we are here again to uh, abandon this um, you know for a second time but uh, go, go through it this time uh, that's all of the comments that we have we thank you again for your time uh, we concur with uh, the city uh, staff to this point getting us here and uh, we ask that you approve these this evening thank you when you went through everything did you go through all three well, a b and c yes yes okay thank yes. you just want to make sure yes. thank right, you very good to the staff thank you for okay so just really quickly uh, all three at once this is the property um, in question um, it's a it's a number of easements that crisscross across the property as is being developed it really is a cleaning up of a lot of invisible lines um, the backup that you have in your application includes the analysis by the city engineer as well as a letter from the city utilities department and other things and so ultimately um, the um, the finding that you have to make for these three easements that have been accommodated through other means and through the testimony of the applicant is that they will not result in a detriment of the provision of utility services to adjacent properties or the general area um, so if you have any questions the applicant and I are both here um, but ultimately the services have been been shifted around um, so that's it okay very good well it is a quasi judicial hearing so we're going to open the uh, floor up to anybody who is here who would like to speak to either 7A, 7B, or 7C. And seeing no one, public <coughs> comment is closed. We're going to roll back to the applicant and the uh, staff. If there's any um, cross examination or rebuttal testimony, now would be the time. None? None. 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 Okay, very good. To the commission. Oh, the engineer's in favor. I'm in favor. Motion to approve. Just a reminder all three have to be done separately. Yeah, separately. Yeah. Motion to approve resolution number 34 23. Second. Yes. Call the roll, please. I'd like to. For discussion as okay. something yep. if at first sure. you don't succeed try try again thank you always good to hear call the thank roll thank you please. miss cassell yes mr boylston yes miss johnson yes mayor petrolia yes mr frankel yes motion to approve resolution number 35-23 second call the roll mr boylston yes Ms. johnson yes mayor petrolia yes mr frankel yes Ms. cassell yes motion to approve resolution number 36-23 second Call the roll, please. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Petrolia? Yes. Mr. Frankel? Yes. Ms. Cassell? Yes. Mr. Boylston? Yes. Congratulations. Right. Thank you. Me Thank too. You. Have a good evening. All right, moving on to 7D, resolution number 13 23. This is renaming a portion of the um, of, a, of a drive. Yeah. Um, so the applicant is here. There he is. <laughs> so I know I saw him. Um, so I will let you go over his uh, request. Um, ultimately, um, this is a street renaming request. It's been privately initiated. So I, I'll have the applicant explain the request and then I'll go over the analysis for you. Beautiful. 
Thank you. We are a 40, I'm sorry, uh, Andrew Lazar. Uh, I live at 4860 Cherry Rural Lane in Delray. Thank you. Uh, I am a member of the Homeowners Association of Delaware Country Club, who I represent today. Um, we are a 43-year-old uh, community of homes uh, off Military Trail. And uh, there's a main entrance road called Live Oak Boulevard that runs about two miles right through the community. Um, the problem we have is that in one instance, uh, we get many complaints from people who are not familiar with the area because as they're driving down Military Trail, there's no correlation between Del Air Country Club and Live Oak Boulevard. So they often miss the entrance or they rush to get over and change lanes to get into the community. That was one issue that's been ongoing for a long time. Um, a second and more important reason for us is that there's no equity for us as a community. If we all know many uh, private communities that have their entrance roads named after them, for example, our very next door neighbor is Beaucaire Country Club, and the main road is Beaucaire Boulevard. Mm -hmm. So they have a certain amount of brand equity that we believe we're missing as an organization that we need badly. We think it's an important priority. And the third reason that we chose to do this is because that section of Live Oak Boulevard that runs from Military Trail only one third of a mile in um, has no homes on it. And there's, therefore, it would not impact any addresses. It would not impact any emergency services. There would be no changes required whatsoever. It's just the entrance road to a traffic circle where White Cedar Lane begins. So that's the section of Live Oak Boulevard that we're looking to rename. Um, and for those reasons, we have uh, asked you to consider. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a quick overview of the request and, and let you know some considerations. Um, so the, this is um, Del Air Country Estate. Oh, gosh, it's Country Club Estates or Country Estates, I'm sorry. Country Club. My eyesight isn't what it used to be. Um, so the, the, re the street that they're talking about is currently Live Oak Boulevard. And it is flanked on either side by these large monument signs that announce entry into their development. Um, the initial request um, was to rename um, the uh, the inner the section of the roadway to the traffic circle to Del Air Boulevard. Um, ultimately, we found some conflicts with some existing streets, and I'll show you um, those names because it, it's important as you consider this request. So the, the request was revised to uh, change the name to Del Air Country Club Boulevard, which is what this road leads to. The, the country club's right there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to Miami, you're going to Del Air Country Club Boulevard. So um, that's what's in front of you. Now, you'll remember that we recently adopted a set of guidelines as to how we make decisions about street names. Um, so mostly it's about new street names in particular, it's important they don't duplicate other street, line, street names, and this is critical because our public safety officers are responding to emergencies and they need to know where they're going, and so there's been a lot of discussion about this particular request. Um, and this is why we couldn't have Del Air Boulevard because if you are dispatching someone, you cannot hear a hyphen. So <laughs> that wasn't going to work at all. Ironically, this is done by Lowson. There's a Del Air Avenue, a Del Air Boulevard, and a Del Air Court. So now you're considering renaming part of Live Oak Boulevard into Del Air Country Club Boulevard. So this is, you know, I think worth, you know, considering that they are similar uh, and not in the same location. Um, so our guidelines tell us that we have to uh, maintain a continuous street name. Um, and so this is the portion or the segment that they're talking about. And then when it forks at the traffic circle, um, this part would re remain Live Oak Boulevard, and then this moves into the other street, which is um, White Cedar. I couldn't remember the color of the cedar. Okay, so um, so this is ultimately, you know, the decision that is it appropriate or acceptable to rename a, this segment with the geographical, um, you know, sort of forking point, a reasonable place to change street names or not. Um, and um, so it's between, and then the other thing is that, you know, quite honestly, it, it's, it is an older community and it's been Live Oak Boulevard for 43 years. So that is another consideration is that 
This is kind of what it's been called all this time, and now we want to change it. So Live Oak Boulevard is an established name. Is Del Air Country Club Boulevard distinct enough um, from the others that are down by Lewiston Boulevard to be okay? Um, in fact, you know, I actually worry it might be more confusing for the other streets because this is the Del Air Estate. So, um, and then ultimately, another part of the consideration is what the applicant has um, explained that no actual properties are on this segment. So, however, heating and fire are here, um, and you know, if they're responding to a call and they're going to Delaware Country Club Estates, you know, they've been going to Live Oak Boulevard for a long time. So, you know, these are the things we have to consider. Um, if they were, um, I think, properties that had homes on them, we would they know. have a lot higher level of concern. But um, nonetheless, it came out of planning board with a 6-0 approval, but it, ha it has been debated pretty extensively with staff, with, the, you know, some of the dispatchers have some concern about the change. Um, and so this is before you now, just in terms of, and it's kind of where we are now. So we've, we've been talking about it for a while. Okay, so question. It, it would seem to me that it would be hard pressed to believe that people in Del Air are gonna be calling up and saying, I'm on Del Air Country Club Boulevard, mm -hmm. if in fact they're a little further down in a house that is either this, you know, the, the Oak Road or Live the, Oak. Right. yeah, exactly. So to me, I, I mean, if, the, if there were houses on it, I think I'd have a problem with it, but why would there be confusion? Car accident? If, well, then well they would tell them to go to Del Air Country Club. Yeah. You know, I mean, that we asked the chief, uh, because I, I was looking at the chief and he is, do you have a position? You got two. You, Chief. <laughs> well, you're the one who responds Chief to Tommy. most emergencies. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, and ultimately, mm -hmm. yeah. We did get input from the higher levels of FD at this point um, before, but not from the big chief, so. <laughs> uh, good evening, uh, Keith Tommy, Fire Chief. So uh, this was brought to me today. This is the first time I saw this, and, and there was some concerns with some of our dispatchers. Okay. Uh, both at police and at, at fire in Palm Beach County. Um, but, you know, we've looked at it, you know, this evening, and, and uh, we agree with you. Uh, there's no houses there mm -hmm. that, where they're talking about. And that, and just using common sense, you would look at that and say, nobody's going to call that in for anything. So uh, the Live Oak is staying the same where the houses mm -hmm. are at. White Cedar is staying the mm -hmm. same where houses are at. So yeah, I, I, I don't, I mean, and, and plus, if there was an accident out in front of Delaware Country Club, you're not going to be going to Lowson. You're going to be going off to, you know, uh, to Delaware Club. Country Club. Right. So I think that that kind of explains it for me. I yeah. It's a small portion, unless there is really a reason. You agree? I, I would agree. Okay. There were houses on there. Yeah, oh, I, I think it would be a totally different situation. Right. Totally different. So, okay, very good. Thank May you I ask very a much. question? How does that change, like, GPS programming if that someone's a, looking to get there? And, I mean, do we create, I hate to use this word, liability for ourselves, but if we change the name of this road and something happens on this road and we can't get there in some... Well, once again, there's no addresses on this road. I understand there's no addresses, but if someone calls their car's broke story. down... Remember a few weeks ago we had that nice lady from the Goat Cafe come in there? Yes, I do. I went and I put her address in my GPS, and she's pretty new, and I went right to the Goat Cafe. Okay. These GPS things, they go Right, quick. so how do you, um, oh, because you're saying because she's... Yeah, it, it updates. So updated that would quick. change yeah. the road. Okay. I, but I mean, in I, addition to that, you would never really use that as a, you would use Del Air Country Club, or you'd use one of the addresses in the property to find where you're going. You wouldn't say, here's a piece of Pro, you know, road that I want to find and and do a GPS that way, unless there's a there's an address to it. Yeah, because it's a linear road, you're not going to exactly. pick up one spot for yeah. GPS like you would a house. Exactly. The, the yes. only kind of type of call I see is getting there on that road would be a car accident. Right. right. And they would say car accident on military, military in Del Air. Yeah. 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 The gate will tell you where to go. They, they probably will tell you military yeah, before exactly. you tell you Del right. Air. <laughs> is there a gate? Um, yes, there is. is gate oh. I just had one question. We the city or now going to need to change the signs. I don't know if that's a big expense, but it's an expense. I don't know if it's ours, is it? So this is, um, 
So what, this is one step, and the first step is whether the city agrees, and then from here, um, the resolution would go to the county, and we would be, with that approval, updating GIS layers and other things. Um, and we have an addressing, we need more than one, but currently we only have one addressing uh, position filled, and they work together with um, the GIS manager for the city and the reference layers that the dispatchers use to um, to know where to say and then in terms of like your GPS telling you to turn right onto Live Oak Boulevard and it's no longer Live Oak Boulevard you know those things actually get updated I think rather what about quickly. the big green sign that's entering the, the key know? is the public safety knowing and that would be updated within our internal system for what about the green signs that are um, directional on the actual road um, so those are the ones I was speaking military about. is county okay. and so the the request would have to go to the gotcha. county and then the rest of this road is actually a private road and so it would be the responsibility of the HOA so to change really, signage inside the G GPS stuff with us that's really what we'd be looking at right I just one, one more question. Sir, can you tell me if this, there is never any, is that a golf course? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Very good. Thank you. Motion to approve. Second. <coughs> please. Mayor Petrolia. Yes. Mr. Frankel. Yes. Ms. Cassell. Yes. Mr. Bolston. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Step one, Mr. Lazare. Congratulations. Thank you very yes. much. Yes. Good luck. Appreciate All right. We've got a 7E nomination for appointment to the general employee um, retirement fund, and uh, this is to uh, Commissioner Bolston. Well, the good news is that we have uh, three applicants. Apparently, only if you have the last name that starts with a D. If you're Dixon, <laughs> Doherty, and Doro. Um, and all of them reached out with an email that were really excited and really want to sit on this board. I'm going to go with uh, Henry Chip Dixon uh, because our pension administrator reached out and they had spent time on our police filling in for a role and um, and now would like to have a full term and had a really great recommendation um, so I'm gonna put forward uh, Henry Chip Dixon okay and uh, all of them are very well qualified and hopefully they'll all sit on that board I just um, if I can I just say one thing and I'm gonna uh, second you on that um, but this um, I would just like to say to Marty who's been sitting here all night who came and made a lovely presentation about his qualifications I'm sure you'll come up next mm -hmm. thank and thank you for staying through the meeting yeah. And welcome to Delray. Okay, we have a second, and we have a, a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Mr. Frankel? Yes. Ms. Castell? Yes. Mr. Boylston? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Petrolia? Yes. Next time, Marty. Yeah. All right, thank you for your patience and hanging out here as long as you did. Thanks, we appreciate Marty. it. Fun stuff. Okay, <laughs> city attorney's uh, merit increase. This is going to be DOT. Good evening, Mayor Commissioners, Dot Bass Human Resources. This agenda item provides you with the opportunity to consider an annual merit increase for the city attorney. The completed evaluations that were submitted to Human Resources have been provided to Ms. Jellin. The average score of the evaluations received was 4.92. Wow. Out of a scale of what? Five. 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 Thank you. <laughs> for, the, for the public, it's not out of ten. <laughs> it's very important. It is. Uh, Waiting. Thank you. I'll advocate for Lynn. Yeah. I'll advocate for. I'll Lynn. advocate for Lynn. I. I so where do we start? Time. Well, no, I, I say this all the time, and I think we have great people working here, mm -hmm. uh, but Lynn is at the top to me. Yes. Um, I think she's. Remarkable. I think her staff is spectacular. Um, I see some of the other attorneys at other boards, and I compare them to Lynn, and I can't think of how lucky we are. Yes. So my, my position will be the maximum increase, but I look forward to hearing from my colleagues. Maximum is? I don't know. Five <laughs> is five. typical, but, um, you know, we had this discussion at the CRA, and Ms. Johnson, you know, I'm, I'm threw it out there pretty high, so I actually feel we have to go. We should go higher than Good. five. I think it's higher. appropriate. I'll support whatever you think is. I'm happening. thinking, and I know so I'm thinking seven. Oh, I was thinking eight. No, I think seven would be perfect. What seven and a half? How about eight? <laughs> and I would love She's to say jewel. to you, I I I gave Lynn my review, and I. The thing that I love about you, well, I love so much about you, Lynn, but you're accessible and really I can call in anytime with a comment, critique, criticism, and you know, I really appreciate um, how we can 
comfortably communicate with you. And I also, I, you know, even this recent, all the contracts that are happening around here and what's going on and your input has been extremely helpful to us. And I really want to thank you for your hard work and dedication. Okay, that, um, I'll, I'll support your seven. seven. Yep. Thank you. Do we have okay. a motion? Motion to approve 7%. Increase. I think I do this every year, but I'll be sticking with um, our city policy in regards to the, the, the top race, so I will be voting against it. But um, I think this is the one re review. Can we get a second first? I'll second for Thank discussion. You. The one Thank review you. that I could really just like, copy paste every year. I know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I don't, but, uh, and we do, t you know. She gets paid. I, I have to tell you, but. you're so funny that you say that because I came out with my score and and then all of a sudden I came across like last year's and it was the exact, exact same. same. <laughs> and I thought to myself, but it wasn't the same numbers in the same you know areas, but it was just so interesting because it was the exact same number that I came out with last year. And again, you know, uh, that, it was interesting that you say that copy paste. Yeah. I didn't do that, but anyway. And if you recall, we were informed by the former city attorney that she didn't want the job. Oh <laughs> yes, that's right. That was uh, and we were, her boss yep, at the time. So we were very, very fortunate lucky to get you. Out. Yep. Well, she came running in and said, it's not true. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 All right. Yes. <laughs> Here you are. You're I, I, Mr. Johnson. Thank you. I think Lynn is the best, and we are so blessed to have her. She has taken the city out of so many um, fires that we're not always aware of. She doesn't toot her horn, mm -hmm. and it happens, and we find out afterwards. There are so many balls up in the air right now. That's why I said she deserves eight. If I could give her 10, I'd give her 10. But uh, that's not within the purviews of me. But if seven and a half? No, seven. I thought somebody said seven and a half. Um, okay. <laughs> but the, the motion is for seven? Yes. And if I may say something, too, before we start, is I, I just want to say the one thing that is very difficult for everybody who is in the audience to understand in having these positions with five bosses that don't always see eye to eye on everything and to be able to keep yourself uh, you know, together Same. and not to be violating one person's trust over another person's trust, it takes, uh, it takes a really it's unique hard. person. And I have to tell you, um, we have one other person that I can honestly say that it, you know, is, is like that, and that's our um, assistant, uh, Dolores Rangel. Yeah. She has been through, I don't know, 11 uh, mayors, I guess, at this point in time. And but how many she, commissioners. Exactly, but she can keep that balance, and that is something that is very unique to the position that you hold and that you've done such a great job of. So, um, you know, happily uh, with the 7%. So we have a motion and a second. Call the roll, please. Ms. Cassell? Yes. Mr. Boylston? No. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mayor Petrolia? Yes. Mr. Frankel? Yes. All right, moving on to 7G, which, oh my gosh, I feel so Lynn. bad for everybody who's been sitting in here all this time. Consideration of the interlocal agreement between the City of Delray Beach and the Downtown Development Authority. And this is going to be Jeff, Mr. Orris. I, I can start off very quickly because okay. I've had conversations with Laura Fantastic. as early as today. And we can move a couple of these along, which is Beautiful. good since it's so late. Wonderful. So I can tell you that as to um, the request. See, this is why you earn your 7%. <laughs> right there, right there, guys. See there? I can read the room. <laughs> so um, on section 5M, which talks about the permitting, we're going to leave things status quo. So okay. I'll leave the language. Um, however we do it now is, is going to remain the same. Okay. As to section 11A, which was the insurance requirements, we're going to remove that additional language that the DDA had requested. Okay. Um, as far as the marketing and the activities, those types of things, I think there was just a miscommunication. I think so too. I th Laura and I went back and forth a lot, and I think she understood what the city's concerns yes. were. Um, and so as to the portion about the coordination, I think we, we have an understanding that, I'm not going to bore you with the details, but I think we do have an understanding on that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the rebranding, I do think that that will have to come before the commission. I don't think that's going to get done this year, candidly. I mean, we're already almost halfway into the fiscal year. So um, huh? that, that should probably come before you. Um, am I speaking out of turn? Um, am I okay? Am I, are we clear on these things? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, timing wise, we can't make that call right. yet, but. It's going to come through with a business plan for you, and, and I think those things will be addressed at a later point in time. 
Um, you might want to also coordinate with the opening of um, Crest, and Crest isn't going to happen until probably later on this year anyway, yeah. because no, yeah, I won't be right. So what we want to do is make sure that it makes sense. So really, the main one is is the revenues and right. how we want to address that. Let's be honest, <coughs> the first what two three years there's I mean, not going to be there, there's not going to be real revenues out of this. So I I think that. That's probably where your discussion should be directed today, but I feel confident that for the most part, we've worked out 80% of it. Yeah, that's a good great. number. Yeah. I had suggested that, uh, well, when we talked, we talked about the revenues, making sure that all the revenues are going back into the facility with half for programming and half for capital improvement. I think that's fair. Um, is, is, and did you feel that was fair? I don't know if we should put a cap on it. What do you mean? Okay. I think it should just be that it's rolled back in, whether it's, you know, whatever's left over goes well, towards the capital. Programming and capital improvement are very different. I understand, but what so. I'm saying is, is that you, you want to continue your programming and you're probably going to have a lot higher percentage in your first year, your ongoing years. You're not going to have as much going into capital because we're, we're building up. Right. So to me, I, you just say that it's rolling back in, whether it's going to programming or capital improvement, it's whatever's left over. That's the way I see it. I don't it, think like that's, fund. Uh, I think, no? I feel like you need to be specific because you want Why? some portion going into capital improvement because we're not talking, if this, in the short term, you're correct. In the long term, though. I understand, yeah, but we, we are going to be maybe hurting the short term because what if they need more for programming now and less later because it starts to build on itself. What are your thoughts, uh, Laura? So what we've proposed in here, and maybe do you want to speak to this? Or do you want to go ahead? Okay. So what we had come through, what we provided in the backup is really the profit sharing. So right now as we go forward, any um, revenues or um, Sponsorships to go towards offsetting currently, but any profits as we move into the next, if there's profits, that we would put towards a profit sharing process um, that would go towards programming as well as capital. So there is a fundraising arm that's going to need to be part of this. Um, events um, that raise funds to put to, towards um, items that need to be improved on the campus itself, as well as additional programming activation to keep the campus um, as that cultural arts center. So, so do you think that there should be limitations, or do you think it should just be towards those and your your board decides how much is going into each? Well, first, I think we, think we need to figure out what those expenses are and that capital cost mm -hmm. um, and what's available as far as we, because there is, and what capital means is that capital is so there's a lot of things that we need to mm -hmm. look at there so programming itself i think is something that we would also need to as we project and bring back at our and we've talked these through these conversations with lynn and and the quarterly reports and bringing forward for our budget planning for the future year um that's where we can make those those decisions too and bring that proposal saying we if we are projecting this as far as these programs we're going to need the um the revenues to go towards that and then if you have a you know five hundred thousand dollars worth of capital expenses that need to put forth there you know how do we chip away at that expense as well mm -hmm. so does that makes sense if that answers answer your question? question because again Not exactly <laughs> well i think you i mean we're going to need you i mean you can you can assess 50 percent goes towards capital 50 percent goes towards programming or i like that idea so, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll jump in. Um, I don't think, I just don't think that's feasible. I think we're going to need as much of the revenue going back into programming as, yeah. as Especially possible. Especially initially. As possible. Initially, I mean, really, if you think about it, we're not talking profit, we're talking revenue. Mm -hmm. So most likely the revenue is going to break, break even the cost mm -hmm. you just put out for whatever that, mm -hmm. you know, art installation you just brought in. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that would be a big day. That would be a good day. If the, yeah, you know, if the, if the, if the revenue equaled it and it costs, and it costs nothing. Um, I don't think we do that with any of our other facilities. I mean, we don't expect, you know, the programming at a community center or, or at a, um, at a, at a football field or to go into the infrastructure and pay for the infrastructure. That's not, that's not how we treat any other facility. We have to take care of that facility. We have to improve that park. We have to improve those buildings really regardless. So I, I, I wouldn't want to put a restriction that 50% 
because and really it's it's pennies in in a bucket of the, the money that needs to be spent over there on those mm-hmm. buildings. Um, I much rather see it go okay, into rev um, into the um, the program. Okay, so time out because I think you're talking about something different. You're talking about maintenance versus um, mm-hmm. a capital improvement oh, project. Oh, yeah, improvement because that's for me more. that's different. You know, yeah. I mean maintenance is not something that we're even talking about here. Right. We're talking about capital improvement projects. Yeah, I don't see anything right now that we would be doing. I think that it's going to all go into programming, and if we're capping our programming at fifty percent, we 50%, agree. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I and listen. If it if it ends up that that's what it has to be, then you're just going to be building up eventually, um, a, you know, a capital improvement, uh, you know, project fund for the campus. Uh, that's what you'll do. So it's it, to me, it doesn't. I know you have. I don't know where you're coming from. I just from, guess so. I'm thinking that it done well and correctly. There'll be the nonprofit uh, arm of this will be getting grants and different things and and. I have great expectations for you, for all of you, clearly. I think it's going to be amazing, and I think it's going to happen fast. You know, but so why so maybe would we, it's on a scale, right? But why would we cap it now? I think it's something we can always roll back to, yes, and, mm-hmm. and yeah. readdress. And look so at to that, me, I'm right, kind of thinking, let them run with this. Let them I'd run. I'd be comfortable revisiting it in the future. I just think it needs to be something that we yeah. say we're going to revisit depending on how it goes. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> I think that we'll let them, you know, run with it, mm-hmm. and 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 then and then in time, if things are really kind of getting really big and they want to start creating a capital improvement, maybe then we look at, you know, with the money coming in, that some of it should be going towards something else. But right now, they're not going to have anything that's going to be directed in one direction or another. I I, I don't think we're going to have that for a couple of years. That's just the reality of the situation. So okay. I don't want to cap or hold back anything. Do, do you is that is that okay with? I mean, are you? I know it's our decision, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I'm asking: is that is there anything that you can see that this would be a problem doing? No, and, and remember the 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 money that they're going to be receiving annually is going to be decided on an annual basis. So it's not always going to be one million. So you'll have the ability to increase it, decrease it, maintain it. So yeah. from that standpoint, no. I mean, we don't. We also don't give other organizations a million dollars, right? So they get the facilities for no Close. rent. I. I, well, I'm talking about like Arts Garage or something right. like that. And remember, Arts Garage did have rent, and then it was scaled but back. We do the, so. the public library, and we did um, Old School Square. I mean, it was close to that, 900 at one point in time. Understood. Understood. Well, so we talk- uh, this is always something that's going to come before you on an annual basis, and then you'll be able to determine at that point what the funding is going to be. Okay. With proper reporting and, and auditing, et cetera, et cetera, uh, is this an additional million over the million we're giving the DDA? This is... Yeah. They, they get a million dollars just because they're so an independent entity from the DDA. Yeah. Taxes. So okay, that's, that's all I'm asking. So yeah. We're Maybe. not talking, no. taking any of their $1 million no, 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 the DDA no. receives. No, just want it on the record. Correct. So, Lynn, do you want to clarify the funding change from the original we did, request? We did. Um, some of you expressed concerns about going into reserves, which is a valid concern. Um, in speaking with Laura, we were able to lower the amount. So it's instead of $1.4 million, it's going to be $1 million. Mm-hmm. And we confirmed with Mr. Moore that he will not have to use reserves for that money. He has $750,000 now after the mid-year budget adjustment, which will be around April. Um, he's, he's confident that he'll have the, the last two fifty, dollars um, which would be the payment in July. Is this the same seven hundred and some million that we were using for some oh, other so. item? We'll take it. it was initially. <laughs> <coughs> we'll take. You don't have that. I'm, I'm, I try. I'm not keeping the accounting of it. I just was curious. This is what we've created for the right. DDA to take over. So yeah. that's the money that we gave them when we were at the. If you remember the goal mm-hmm. setting meeting. Mm-hmm. Right. So just we are where we are. Right. Sorry, Mr. Moore. Did you want to? Speak? Uh, please continue. Okay. It's quite all right. So just as we've you know when working through this process, and first of all, thank you all for thank you, Lynn, and congratulations. Um, and I. Echo all your comments for. Lynn. She's not giving you any of her money. I, I know. It's okay. <laughs> but um, she's yeah. well deserved. Um, she does work uh, extremely hard for the city and is very dedicated and a, a mama bear just like me. So I appreciate that. Um, but it is something that where we are, we understand where this funds is coming from. That this is definitely something that came after as we met in October. It is very important for all of us um, as a community, as an organization, to really move forward as best as possible and if it's with you know the funds if they're in a certain if they're limited in a certain place then we'll work with that 
Um, it's not ideal, but we are in March or in mid-February, so uh, we'll adjust, we'll make things happen, we'll work hard with our community to fundraise where possible to potentially offset some of that if we, as we go forward. But um, we do agree that pulling from reserves is not ideal, as we understand that from our organization as well. So Thank you. I just have one other question. We already have some programs planned by Mr. Metalk. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. So these are going to be in addition to? All in addition to, yes. Good luck. Good one coming. Okay, so what do you need then? Or I'm sorry, did you if want I to could. talk? Vice Mayor, yes, absolutely. I'm, I'm going to preface my comments by stating that I respect the majority's original decision. However, based on uh, the video of the DDA meeting uh, from January 20th, 23rd, I need to make some comments. And I also will state for my colleagues, I had a delightful meeting with Mavis on Friday. Um, I, I did invite Lynn based on the email that was sent out with blatant misrepresentations on what this board did. Uh, that was done on the 20th as well. Hmm. I, I really, and I told you Mavis, when we met Friday, I was gonna sit up here and be quiet and uh, you know, silently object, because that's just how I feel. However, after, and I spoke to Lynn this morning, after watching the video, I'm outraged on the comments that were made. Which video are we talking about? Uh, the DDA meeting. meeting. Okay. But uh, Lynn sent us an email that, mm -hmm. I don't know if you were you able to, to catch yeah, it. I did, yeah, okay. I watched it. And, you know, it's, it's Ms. Woodson came up in, in public comments and talked about being collaborative. Unfortunately, the comments made at that DDA meeting were anything but. In my view, after reading or watching that video, I don't think we should be collaborating with a group that thinks the city is desperate. And that's not a quote once or twice, that's three times. Uh, there's their attorney, Janice Rustin, said at that meeting, she doesn't see the need for city approval. Ms. Woodson, at that meeting, you stated, where is the city leading in marketing? Mr. Costello, Big Al, as we all know him, quote, there's nothing that says that the reason the city is doing this is because they screwed it up for two years and they're desperate. Mr. Costello later stated, the reason they are coming to the table is because of their desperation. Ms. Benson stated at that meeting, we don't want to be associated with the past. And then Ms. Big Al said, the city acknowledges that they have been less than successful. And I found it outrageous that Ms. Rustin was smiling and laughing. Um, when you, you state you want to collaborate, you work together. You, do, you don't demean city staff. You don't demean city departments. You don't demean the city. You don't demean all five of us. That's what was done. It was a, a big joke. And I respect my colleagues wanting this space activated. I respect that it is a entry to our city that's so important to everyone that lives here. And you know, quite frankly, before I saw that meeting, I was just gonna sit up here and be silent and listen to the comments and we could go forward. But the fact that we're negotiating and entering into an agreement on a group that's calling us desperate, that wants us to use millions of dollars in taxpayer dollars and then insulting us on top of it, I need to put that on the record. Mm -hmm. I, may I speak? Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. No, 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 I'm sorry. You got it. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to before this time. So, again, I will respect what, I will respect any position my colleagues have. But when you disrespect my city staff and my city colleagues and my city commission, I take issue with that. Okay. Thank you. If I may. Thank you. No. I, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step in here. I appreciate Thank real, you for the Real quick. And I, and I totally understand where you're coming from. I, I, I watched it. But this isn't about how I feel. This is about what is happening to something that we all love in the heart of our city. This is about coming together. And I get it. I understand how you felt. I felt a little bit of it myself. But now, when you really stop and you look at it, we have to do something great here. And I think these are the people to do it. I really do. I have every bit of faith. And I'm watch, I've watched how you guys have already handled the small amount with really no you know, agreement between us at, that, um, at the Cornell Museum. And I'm, and, I'm, and I'm impressed. 
And I think that this, we have such a great opportunity of turning this wonderful central park of ours into something that it's never been before. That's how I feel. And, you know, I've been accused, so have this, these two ladies sitting next to me, for one year. It hasn't been two years, as Al has said, or whoever, everybody <laughs> else. Every year, it's a, every week, it's another year added on, you know? I mean, how long it's been taking. We have had access to this less than a year. It'll mm -hmm. be a year on the 10th. That's the truth. It was a year, a day after my kid's birthday. So that's why I remember that date. Not like Mr. Moore. So, um, <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, is that we're not vindictive. No. We're not coming from a bad place. We're not coming from this to take control and to, you know, get some, you know, get back at somebody. This was done because it was needed to be done. And the hardest thing that we, the three of us especially, because we were targeted and still mm -hmm. are, yes. have had to, to stand up here and take for a full year is just a battering. There is nobody that wants to do that in our position. There's nobody. But the thing about it is, is when you know you're doing something right and you know you can take something and make it better and leave it better, you do it. I did take issue with some of the things that were said, but you know what? I say things sometimes that I don't mean. I mean, it's the truth. And when I, I even had, Al called me. We talked about it. And I'm okay with it. Mm -hmm. Listen, everybody's coming from a different place. I don't think it was appropriate. I think it's a great learning point that we're all in this together. And that this, is, this isn't about any one of us. It's about what we're going to deliver to this city. Right. So if we can get out of our own ways your group, our group, and let this happen, I think it can be the most amazing thing that we leave behind. And mm -hmm. I'm really, really looking forward to it. And all I want to do is support you guys any way that we can to make this a success together. Mm -hmm. Together. May I? Yes. I, I sh Adam's yeah. always a gentleman. Yeah. As long as all the time. To talk. I'm sorry, just to yeah, one to moment, please. Okay. You're always a gentleman, and, when, and for you to be upset, I, I totally right. understand. And I saw it. We all saw it. I spoke to Laura about it. What I would say to you is we have such an amazing relationship, and I, I, I'm wholeheartedly thrilled about this. I think that was an unfortunate misstep, and I don't foresee it happening again. I appreciate you getting up today and saying what you said. I'm taking that as an apology, and I thank you. And, uh, but I will say, you know, our staff is off limits. That's, we all agree. We are here. We can take the criticism all the time, but the staff is totally off limits. Yeah. And I thank you, and I think we will have that level of professionalism going forward. Thank you. Let's I'm give, beyond excited. Let's give them the opportunity. Okay, to say I, I just was going to end it. Go ahead, okay. Mavis. If, if I may, um, no, that was not one of our board's finest moments. But I think you saw when we had our meeting back in October how passionate our board is mm -hmm. and you know our, our meetings concerning this topic have been robust and they've been full of energy and you know it's got us to where we are today so I apologize on behalf of our board and uh, you know I'd like to say also Adam that and I said it to you in our conversation on Friday we can't look back, and that's what I mean by mm -hmm. we can't associate ourselves with the past. We can't look back at the past. That's done. It's the minute now going forward that's important to us. Um, I, I'm proud of the diverse group that we have on our board. We've got some very successful businessmen, and their goal is especially this is a business. Let's run it as a business in order to be successful. So I appreciate that. And uh, your concern about the taxpayers, I think if they realize that that's where we're coming from, they can appreciate that that's what we have in mind, running this the way it should be as a business again. And we are going to have a 501c3, so that will enable us to be able to apply for some grants and get donations, which hopefully will help. You know, we can't promise you that in a year or two 
that will be completely sustainable or self-supporting. But we're going to try our best. And our goal is that that will happen sooner and not later. Um, I, I had in my notes, I wanted to make certain that I said as a DDA, DDA board, we work with a budget that is around the same amount. And with that, we've been successful with special events, beautification, and perhaps most successful and notable, our marketing, uh, since that was an issue. And Lynn, thank you for pointing out to me um, the image that you found, and we spoke about being concerning. And I would be remiss if I didn't say and thank, I don't think we have Sam still here. I think he was. He's here. He's yeah. okay. He's okay. over in the also. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> that that Even we pizza. appreciate everything that Parks and Recreation and Public Works have done to keep the grounds active, mm -hmm. looking good. You guys have gone above and beyond, and we can't say thank you enough. We value our working re uh, relationship with all of our partners and look forward to continuing that partnership. We also appreciate the support we're getting from our community. And I did have this information on you uh, for you on Friday, but it didn't come up, Adam, about uh, volunteers. Mm -hmm. So I was happy that I, I had, in fact, contacted Maruska on Thursday night and asked, what's the status of our volunteers? And she got the information back. I had it in my hand. Uh, so we didn't get into that conversation. But I'm glad that she gave you that information today. So you know there are people mm -hmm. that are coming back that still want to be involved. The love is there all around. Um, so I, it is. It's, I, I don't like cliches, but we are a village by the sea. And it takes a village. And I think we've got that working for us. Commissioner Boylston, if you remember at the October meeting, you referred to the International Downtown Associations conferences. And I, too, am amazed at, to learn at what some of the other downtowns uh, have done with success, taking on projects larger than their organizations. I can't imagine anything more significant than this endeavor for this to be our DDA's project. It's definitely, definitely larger than our organization, but not beyond our capabilities. This could be our one big thing. Yes, I can. So thank you. This was relatively easy, and I appreciate yes. that. I think Mark may have something that he'd like Mark, to Mark, yeah. did you want to say something? Yeah, okay. just uh, no prepared remarks here, but everybody knows I'm a man of integrity. I've never spoken badly about anybody. I'm always trying to be positive. I, n I haven't seen the video. I wasn't there. I was in Italy on, on work, which Ooh. is great. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, my job now takes me traveling six months out of the year. Okay. Um, but I still make my travels go around the DDA. Um, I try to make every meeting, but you, know, you can't do it when you're in Italy. But no, things were said. I, I was going to say, this is a passionate group. Uh, so I'm, you know, you saw them want to get up here and go, no, 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 no. But, you know, things are said all the time. But I mean, I'm on there for another year and a half, and I, when we got this opportunity, or when it's, we'll, we'll see. I mean, I've reached out to the old people. You know, I said, let's collaborate. I mean, Laura's just like, oh, we're going to work with this group and this group and this group. I mean, we were so passionate against about it that maybe, unfortunately, some some things were said. I mean, Big Al always says what he says uh, about anybody, and I'm just like, oh, I would never say that. So, but no, I mean, it is, and I'm like you, I would never say anything bad about. City staff, I mean, I don't know how you guys run for office. I, d I, I, could, I couldn't take it. I said that. Um, so, you know, it, it, but we will, we're excited about the opportunity. We, you know, I got, I told Laura after our meeting, I said, let's get the 501c3 going right away. I think we're, it, it's already there. Right. Um, have some donations lined up. So we're there. We're ready to move forward. I don't have a business downtown anymore. But yes, this is part of our district. We're excited about activating this for the whole district um and i think you are too and hopefully you still get over here. your ob objection yeah you still I'm still, live here. Still, still live here and i'll That's live right. here <laughs> own two houses in delray and plan to live here the rest of my life so Wonderful. i want the best place ever thank you commissioner johnson I, I really wish you'd let me go before this that, oh i'm so that sorry could've, that could have been the the ending <laughs> done 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 voting whatever um i just like to thank the dda I did not see the video. I was told about it. Don't and bother. I, I won't. I, it's just, <laughs> there has been so much negativity 
over the vote that we took August the 10th, yeah. 2021. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't change one thing about it. It was a vote that was years in the making. And our blessing is that we were the ones who said enough is enough and we're going to step forward. So with all of that said, without getting into anything that anybody can use against us once again, I'd like to thank you for stepping forward. I know it was hard. I begged Laura. I'll say this again when it first happened, Laura. And sometimes when I say something, it's going to happen. There so all I can do is do my level best as long as I'm here to encourage you. And I'm always a listening board for whatever. I'm an advocate. Something had to be done. We do want to revitalize the site. And Sam, wherever you are, thank you so much with you and your staff. If there's any pizza left, I'd love to have a slice. Oh, boy. Yes. <laughs> Sam's here. <laughs> He's chewing. He's, He's chewing. chewing. <laughs> and so I'd just like to thank you all. It's not been easy. I'd like to thank Lynn. Um, the reason that it might have been tough is because we didn't want to duplicate what had happened before. So with that said, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Right, very good. Commissioner Boston. Yep, so I, I also haven't seen the video, but obviously I got phone calls about it. Um, you know, I, I'll say um, I think, you know, there's aspects of this was mishandled from the beginning, and there was times where it did feel like we were less than successful. There were times it felt like we were a little desperate. I think if we would have uh, continued with uh, an organization from our neighborhood, uh, from our neighboring city, I think that would have been a very desperate move. Um, but we, But we made some really, I think, great decisions, and we were patient, and that gave the time to one of our partners to have a lot of internal conversations on whether or not you were going to put out your hand um, and take on this responsibility, and, uh, and I'm really glad you did, because it's one of those situations where it's like, hey, do you want a promotion? It's double the amount of work, and you could go, eh, I'm good. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm good. I like my job. I like my salary, but you didn't. You're, you're, you're doubling down, and um, you know, with any relationship, there's going to be there's going to be bumps, but we got to pick up the phone. Um, you know, so there was an email that went out after our, our last city commission meeting, which I did not agree with. Um, that came from the DDA. I made a phone call to Laura. We took a uh, we took a walk around downtown. We had a conversation about it. We went over what was said, what wasn't said. Um, I think there was an email that went out, kind of you know correcting the you know the record on that. All good, right? All good. Move forward. I think we need to have a lot more of that. Um, and, uh, and less of it happening, you know, in meetings where we got to hear about it later or certainly not from up here on the dais and it won't happen. So I just will make that commitment to you now, uh, where there'll be some up and ups and downs, no doubt. Um, but you won't hear it from me up here. I'll pick up the phone and we'll have a conversation about it. And, uh, and Hey, I wish you, you and us all the luck. I, um, and the last thing I'll just mention is that, thankfully, we weren't desperate. We took a lot, a lot of time. Remember, we were going to sign this, what, November, December, <laughs> but we didn't. And guess what? I wouldn't have been in favor uh, because we were going to go into the reserves. Every time I checked with staff, are we still going to the reserves? Yes. Still going to the reserves? Yes. It was only recently when it was a no. And the second it was a no, that I can get behind. It wasn't the amount. It was where we were getting it from. Right, and, uh, and, and we have to be responsible with those funds because there are areas, there are things from other departments that weren't funded this year, that were cut. Right. Um, and so I'm not going to go into the, into the reserves for this. Luckily, we don't have to. Thank you for being flexible with our partnership, and, uh, and, and I look forward to, to kicking it off tonight. Awesome. Officially. Very good. Well, thank you. Thank you, Ryan, for your time, and you're, um, you're always reaching out to us with there's issues all of you do and I appreciate that and I would strongly recommend and, and just ask and encourage that everyone does that if there is an issue that you do pick up the phone or answer the phone and um, I know everyone at the city is very accessible but as are we and everything happens in our district so we want to make sure that we're able to be part of the solution um, and get our constituents we're doing our job when we try to 
encourage our constituents to get involved. So, and also making sure that we're hearing it right. You know, I think those are the very important things because what we all hear is something different. Obviously, we hear it all the time and been part of it for a long time. So that's why I think those one-on-one -on -one open dialogue conversations just to clarify are really important. So I appreciate, thank you, Adam, for um, bringing your concerns up and I really appreciate that and noted um, very much so and we'll work, we'll work on our moments uh, to make them better. <laughs> Thank so you. do you need a, um, a motion? So what I was going to suggest, so I don't have to keep bringing this back yes, for you. Um, we can do a motion to approve as amended today. Okay. It will still have to go before the DDA's board, so I'll make sure that I have it amended and we all agree before their next meeting, which is on Monday. Monday. Okay, so we're going to do this quickly. <laughs> yeah. If you want to just motion to approve <laughs> as amended, um, I'll make the changes and get them over to Laura. Motion to approve. Second. As With amended. amended. Okay, very good. And, and open for just discussion real quick. I want to mention one other thing because I think it's really important to note here. The DDA is going to uh, operate on a, on a different level, so um, nothing should ever cross. In other words, like for instance, you send out a letter from the DDA with respect to something that was set up here oh. on traffic. It has nothing to do with Old School Square. Right. So I just want to kind of make that yes. um, very clear because it, it, one doesn't have anything to do with the other. So even though you're the same person that's working in both capacities, yeah. we're not going to be using one for the other or any of that stuff. So I just wanted to make sure that you're aware that when somebody's calling you on the DDA stuff, it's totally different than when someone's calling you on, you know, something for Old School Square. And we need to also remind ourselves of the same thing. That's that's all I wanted to just make sure of. Like so, CRA. Pardon me? Hat are you wearing it? That's exactly right. Yeah. We're doing the same thing with the CRA. We're one hat and another hat. So basically just, you know, ad address us with whatever hat that you want us to be wearing at the time. Mary, All right, so the, we've got the motion will um, authorize you to just execute this once I finalize it. Correct. Okay. okay, so we have a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Mr. Bolston? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Petrolia? Yes. Mr. Frankel? Sorry, no. Ms. Cassell? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Thank you Thanks for all your, Thank your you. patience and hanging out here as long as you guys did tonight. We appreciate it. Thank you. It. Thank all you, right. board and staff. Thank all you. right, moving on. Ordinance number 4-23. An ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Delray Beach, Florida, amending the land development regulations of the City of Delray Beach Code of Ordinances, Chapter 1, General Provisions, Article 1.1, .1, Adoption of Code, Section 1.1.6, Amendments, Modifying the Procedure for Privately Initiated Amendments to the Land Development Regulations, Amending Chapter 2, Administrative provisions, Article 2.4, General Procedures, Section 2.4.5, Procedures for Obtaining Development Approvals, Subsection M, Amendment to the Land Development Regulations to require sponsorship by a single commissioner in order to appear at a commission workshop meeting and to require support by at least three members of the City Commission at a workshop meeting in order to submit a privately initiated amendment to the Land Development should say regulations, Pro providing a conflicts clause, a severability clause, authority to codify, ah. and providing an effective date. And this is second reading, mm -hmm. and it's, it's a, public a public hearing. Yep. Okay, so um, this is an ordinance that uh, this uh, the commission directed staff to pursue because we had the new uh, way of um, bringing forward privately initiated amendments where um, they came to a workshop and it only needed sponsorship by one. And we had several that you know got a sponsor, but it was clear the majority was not necessarily in favor. Um, and with the understanding that um, that you know those amendments, then you know when they're privately initiated, they start running on a track and they take um, priority basically over other initiatives that you know the commission has also directed with a full majority. So the ordinance before you ultimately um, simplifies is a very simple. It's only a couple of edits, but what it ends up doing is stating that um, one commissioner can sponsor at a public meeting, and we didn't. Uh, get into the nitty-gritty of how that happens we've had a couple of people come to public comment where you've been interested to, to hear more with that agreement to sponsorship they would be able to um, appear on a workshop for a formal discussion about whether or not to allow the private initiation and then that's where the second um, you know edit happens where at least three commissioners have to support the request which puts it in the clear majority and then it would be able to move through the process and take um, staff and the board's focus to bring an ordinance forward so um, that's that's fair that's about it it's pretty quick and simple so if you have any questions let me know and well at this point let's go ahead and open it up to anybody in the audience that would like to speak to ordinance number 4-23 seeing no one 
public comment is closed. It makes sense to me um, because this is going to save you guys a lot of time, hopefully, and this is what you know we we're hoping for. That's the whole idea behind it. So I'm I'm on board 100. percent And entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Call the roll. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Petrolia. Yes. Mr. Frankel. Yes. Ms. Cassell. Yes. Mr. Boston. No. Okay, moving on to um, comments, and we don't have any first reads, so comments and inquiries. Mr. Moore. Thank you, Madam Mayor. A couple of items, fairly brief. First of all, the Department of Public Works in recent months offered the discussion in Marist regarding Blue Flag Beach designation and the fact that that does bring a lot of notoriety and recognition to the city of Derry Beach. Blue Flag designation or certification is supported by the Foundation for Environmental Education. We talked a little bit about that in previous discussions. And we learned today that the city of Delray Beach, along with one other beach community in America, had received the opportunity to move forward in the process. So we're very excited about that direction. and Guidance will therefore be offered to proceed accordingly to also help celebrate that accomplishment and recognition today. So I just thought I'd take a moment to offer congratulations to all staff involved to that effect. We're really excited about that prospect and much work to be achieved in that regard. There will be some communication via the city's social media platform recognized in this occasion and doing as much as we possibly can to advise the community and celebrate that achievement. So do we know how many people were um, asking to move forward and weren't asked to? Or do we have any figures like that? I mean, or was it just two people to, I, I want to understand what that means. How competitive we were, yeah, in other words. I mean, is it a com competition or is this. it? This. It is, okay. It is a competition, so. so. Just curious, I'm sorry to have to make you move all the way up here, I just want to know. Thank you, Ms. Stetson. There you go. <laughs> Good evening, Missy Barletta, Public Works Director. It's an application process. Um, you have to meet a, a large, large, large number of criteria mm -hmm. in order to be considered. Most of those cr criteria are, um, are health of the beach and water quality related. Um, Delray Beach is one of only two beaches in the country that, that are um, Met, all the met those those criteria. I will say that they during the process um, there were only three beaches that even felt like they could qualify. Mm -hmm. um, it was ours. There was one in Galveston, Texas, and then um, Malibu in California. in California. Only two of us were able to complete our applications successfully. So I have a feeling that in April we'll learn that there's. There's one East Coast beach one and West one West Coast beach. Right. But they're getting very tight-lipped now about who is actually going to be awarded. Gotcha. And what does that actually mean to us? Um, it, do we, is it just the a designation or is, it, is there anything else affiliated with it? There's, it's an international organization. Mm -hmm. it, is, um, it is very popular in other parts of the world. In Europe in particular, as I became familiar with the Foundation for Environmental Education, it is a tremendous honor for municipalities in Europe to secure that designation. And so it's beginning to gain in popularity here in the States. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. So this is the first attempt to, to establish the program in the United States. We will be allowed to um, raise the blue flag above our beaches. And there's a certain amount of international um, public relations that goes along with that. They publish a list every year, and there are a lot of people who will only visit <coughs> blue flag beaches. Okay, so. and do we have any other ones in the country at this point in time that are a blue flag beach that you know? There of? are none. Oh. There wow, are this none. Is really so we cool. would be. We would be one of the first two. Amazing. All right. If the good. other one makes it, they may not. Yeah. And may hopefully we'll one. make it, right? <laughs> exactly. Hopefully we will. Oh, we, we will. I know, we will. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. You've appreciate worked that. hard on this for a long time, and I appreciate that. All right, I have Mr. to say, it's my staff. My staff did all of this, Thanks not to me. Staff. Yeah, please let them know. We're really, really proud. Thank you. Of all the work that they did. Mr. Moore? Thank you. One other recognition I'd like to acknowledge, and that is... The Florida Municipal Communications Association, which is actually f affiliated with the Florida League of Cities, has recently appointed the Derry Beach Director of Community, excuse me, Director of Communications, Gina Carter, to serve on their board of directors. So just thought I'd acknowledge that. 
So part of the appointment process did necessitate the Office of the City Manager authorizing the appointment and being supportive in that regard, so I was more than happy to offer direction to that effect, and thus my compliments here this evening. So once again, congratulations in that regard, and we look forward to our partnership and support to collaborate accordingly and to remain involved as well as to enable the city of Delray Beach to be recognized at the state level for our efforts. One other item I'd like to briefly talk about, and that is a thought I have in mind in terms of a follow-up workshop meeting in this regard. I've spoken to a couple of you all over the last day or so relative to the special events application process and the fact that the city of Delray Beach for quite some time has had a practice in place whereby waivers and other support resources are made available for specific considerations in that regard. I've also shared a number of weeks ago the fact that the Office of the City Manager and other departments are working collaboratively to evaluate the current structure with respect to the special events policy. What I'd like to do is to proceed with a workshop meeting discussion to this effect to give the City Commission an opportunity to, number one, become familiar with the inner workings of the policy practices and that, and number two, take under consideration feedback and expectations so that we can update that accordingly. Much of this is a function of some comments I did experience with respect to the level of support, the level of resources honored in that regard. We do our best to try to be supportive and collaborative across the board, yet at the same time we do what we can to strike a balance with respect to expectations. Therefore, I think it would be appropriate to proceed in this realm and I will therefore offer some more specific details as to how we would proceed with this footprint, perhaps in my report to you all next week. But again, I think it's a good idea, a good practice, so that we can take under consideration what level of support that may need to be considered for future events, activities, forthcoming, et cetera. Because again, the city has done quite a bit in that regard, and I think it's important for the commission to be familiar with that. The special events policy is an administrative one, however, it's appropriate for me as city manager to take under consideration the thoughts and observations of elected officials before executing that accordingly. That's the environment I wish to create so that we can all be on the same page as much as possible with respect to future considerations. Okay, so we're not, we don't have a meeting next week. Sorry, ma'am? We don't have a meeting next week. We do not have a meeting next week. Right. Next meeting is the 21st, and so again. You said take it up next week. Um, so I was I said the coming weeks. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. He intended the coming weeks. He said next week. What? What? <clears throat> can someone apprise me of what's exactly going on here? Because I'm not exactly sure. I understand. So a number of special events occur in the city of Delray Beach. Right. And some people may be under the impression that they're co-sponsored by the city, but they're actually initiated by a nonprofit organization. We had this discussion, didn't we, about three months ago yes. with respect to utilizing the resources that we weren't going to do that unless you talk to the commission? I don't think it was that explicit. I feel like it was. Yes, it was. It was very explicit. Um, I, I guess what I'm, go ahead, Ms. Johnson. I, I, Mr. Moore has preempted one of my items, which is good because now I won't be accused of having discussed it. I don't know if I'll be on the, uh, on the board, when on the commission rather, when this workshop or whatever he has planned, I think we were very explicit in our desires to put a rein on the amount of funds that were being expended without prior permission, uh, authorization, because it's been my belief and experience that once we set the budget, that is it. And I don't know about this administrative this and administrative that. Um, sometimes when we sit up here and we say something or discuss something and we think we've gone and expressed a collective desire to not have this happen or that not happen, um, it appears to sometimes fall on deaf ears. So, so things, let's cut to the chase. Yes, please do. Here? Let's just pull, call it an, out. An event was, a, an event was um, arranged and city funds were expended outside of what I consider uh, the purviews of the city. How many, what was the, how, how much was expended? I believe the sum is about 19,000. A little less than that. 
I my records that I haven't pulled up yet. That was the initial estimate in terms of waivers for support, barricades, et cetera. And what event was this? This was the Roots oh. event this past weekend. I don't think weekend, it was Roots, Mr. Moore. I've, I've investigated it was not Roots. <laughs> Well, I didn't even know about the event. So the city sponsored an event that I, we didn't know about? It, did not, it was not a direct sponsor. We provided waivers. But it's, what's the difference? The waivers for the safety You're element. Saying that someone it. doesn't have to pay. That's a waiver, correct? Or a staff resources and the safety element barricades. Aren't you supposed to bring that in front of us and ask us? Or call us and ask us? We already discussed this. No, he doesn't believe that he should. I, my conversation with Mr. Moore, and correct me, Mr. Moore, if I say something that is incorrect, you told me that it was a private event. But yet, and still, the more I look into it, I'm finding out that there was a private event, but we paid for everything that, uh, all the costs that was expenses that were incurred. And I don't know where the disconnect is. We said that that was not to continue. Those are funds that were not budgeted, we did not approve, and yet and still they're being expended. Now, was the Atlantic Avenue closed for this event? It was closed for a few hours. You didn't ask us about that? I'm not, I'm yeah, totally yeah, serious right now, I'm getting a little flustered. Okay, so, all right, let's dial this back for a second because I understand where you're going. I didn't I know about it, this, the road was closed. I actually saw a post on Facebook and I thought that can't, Correct. Okay. The thing that so I think, and I had a conversation it. with Mr. Moore about this in Thank the meeting you. that we had today, um, today or yesterday. Yesterday. Um, I was not aware that there was going to be a road closure of such a major road for a, that period of time. You may, basically said, well, it, what, you know, that it was FDOT. I asked you who closed it. You said FDOT. And I said, well, who asked for the closure? And you said the city of Delray Beach. So we went to that level of asking for permission to close down a very busy road for what was a parade that nobody was in attendance. And it was, from my perspective, embarrassing for the city. Um, if you had come to the commission and spoke to us, I mean, it was the first time that they were doing the parade, apparently, or maybe we were doing the parade, I don't know. They were. Okay, they were. Um, that when you have that, you should know what you're going to be handling in order to be able to determine, is this a parade that we want on a major road artery to block, or is this a, road, a, a parade that we're starting off with, and we do it on an auxiliary road so that they build up to that point. That's the way I would handle it, and that's the reason why I think most of the time questions are brought to the commission as to road closures and things like that. We are so always you know, asked about those things. We could have probably told you that it, this wasn't really a parade that was should have been on Atlantic Avenue, closing it down with no spectators for, to, to speak of. It was a huge inconvenience for people coming into our town in the middle of Saturday. So what I'd like to do moving forward is connecting the dots in terms of a formal policy to that effect. Yeah, I think we have a policy, forward. we just didn't follow it. We have yeah. a policy. Can you send that formal policy to everybody yeah. after this meeting? Yeah, because I think we do have one. Whichever one there is. Mm -hmm. The special I events policy, I will do that. Yeah. I'm sorry. I also think this might be a wonderful time, a wonderful time. This might be the opportunity to review that. Maybe we want to change how this well, I think committee we works. Which is what I'm proposing that yeah. we do. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm because getting out to connect it. the may say exactly what we want it to say. I just don't think anybody was, was, it? was even notified. Were you notified um, I was, that Atlantic I, Avenue was closing I down? I was notified in Orlando when I was attending a pension conference with officers, and I had no idea there was a parade. Yeah, okay. I wasn't notified at all. So, um, and, and I have to tell you, it was inappropriate. The parade th that was extended to one candidate, okay, for a commission. Oh, there was a candidate in it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you I missed it. No other candidates. I, I, I just have a problem with that. That is, that is we, they utilize the city's resources to have a parade for one specific candidate. Understood. That's a problem. Yes, ma'am. I wouldn't have it in my honor. No. no. So this whole thing went sideways, and none of us knew about it. Well, we were Mr. the ones Moore. who were being called, not you. Yes, ma'am. So what I'd like to do is to connect the dots, and I'll get the policy to you, but I would like to involve you because we are in the process of formally updating it to incorporate 
every expectation so that any issues to that effect will not be again be experienced. And maybe we'll just inject the commission in and if if whoever is planning anything, if you don't plan far enough ahead that you can't get permission from the commission, it will not happen. And that's a potential consideration as well as part of the formal policy. So I will circulate that to you, ladies and gentlemen, the next day, tomorrow morning. I just sent it. I was just okay, so it was just sent. Thank you. <laughs> no, no grass and we can, thank you. And then what I think what we do next meeting, Talk during about it. comments, we can ask whether or not we even need a workshop. That's if it says right. what we need, That's right. and we just didn't follow Agreed. it. Agreed. Um, right. But I'll just give you, I, I knew the parade was going, going on. I didn't know exactly what it was. It has Parks and Rec, and it was on the DDA website. Um, so I heard about it. Um, but I would say... I found very strange. I was actually leaving town, and not only was Atlantic closed, all the way to yes. Pompeii was closed. Yes, it was. Really? So you have to go six blocks yes, you did. over to get to the other side of Pompeii. Yes. Right. That's just like logistically crazy. not, I mean, crazy. crazy. And so there were so many cars backed yeah. up because you couldn't just go one road over like what we all are used to. You go one road over, right? No, you had to go almost to Lake Ida. Get around Pompeii, so that that would be my you know my only feedback um, that that you know that I saw is um, in, in in addition to what my colleagues have shared. Of course. So for the February twenty first meeting during the regular meeting, I would like to have a follow up review so as to be clearly explicit with respect to the special events policy, because again we initiated a formal review process to potentially update it, and I like to begin at this time above and beyond that piece so that we can get to that place and be definitively clear across all echelons for the organization. Anything else? No, ma'am. All right. You're up. I'm up. So I had sent an email um, requesting um, executive sessions slash shade meetings on three cases. I'm happy to report that one of the cases uh, was dismissed by um, a federal court after a motion for summary judgment was filed. Okay. Um, that was a Guerrero case, so we don't need to have a shade Good. meeting on that one, which is great news. Um, I will say Commissioner Boylston is unavailable on February 9th. Mm. So, you know, there is some sense of urgency to have these meetings. It's not a total sense of urgency. So I can reach out to our outside council and just come back on the 21st and, and get some dates. I'd like you all there. I don't think we've had shade meetings on the Baker case or the Farragut case. Mm. And I think they're important enough that we should have that conversation. Can with we do board. it maybe even before the workshop on the 21st? The, I'm sorry, the commission meeting on the 21st? Um, yes, I think we have, a workshop. we have a workshop meeting that evening. It's going to be a long day. That afternoon. So. It's, it's, well, we could take a look at it and see if it's going to be heavy mm -hmm. and then maybe just kind of load it in. I mean, how much time do you need? 30 minutes? No. On, fair, on the Farragut matter, hours. we were going to need the full hour. Okay. On, maybe on Baker, maybe 30 minutes. All right. Well, then we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Yeah, so okay. I'll, I'll get more dates. question before we go further. Is the workshop going to be 3 o'clock or are we going to come and find out it's going to be at 2 o'clock? I have three o'clock. Okay. Are you Does anybody the on the twenty-first? I have three p.m. We were going to discuss Carver, and there's one other item on. Yep. There. So we were planning for three o'clock. Okay. Yeah, three o'clock. Until the okay. Close. So I'll email everybody with additional dates, and then we can figure that out, and then we'll announce it at the twenty-first. Um, second, for the golf course um, today, we've um, decided all six are going to present before you. We're probably going to need a full day for that. Yes, we will. Um, so, but do we have to have an hour each? I mean, it seems like that would be. I, they were going over this, and it seemed like you know, they did it in an hour's time or a little over an hour for all six. It seems really excessive to have an hour each. So the presentations are very in depth. My concern is that that's really going to be the only time that you're going to have the presenters before you to provide you with a full picture of all the offerings. Okay. So can we at least say 45 minutes and then if they need to go a little further that will and then we can just call the next one and let them know that they're running behind if nobody's here because they're not going to want to sit here for six hours or whatever. They probably will. I think they will. Uh, okay. Well, anyway, so I understand. I understand. Let's do forty-five, and if we okay. need to extra, we'll tell time, them to plan for that. forty-five, and then maybe fifteen minutes for questions. It'll be a long day. Um, do you <laughs> want? We're going to have to um, have a vote for a special meeting. So, do you want us to work with Dolores, and then on the twenty-first we can come up with a date? Because I understand you're going to be in Tallahassee for the date that I had said initially. Yeah. So, I, are we, you talking about for the vote for the final on the golf special course? meeting? You're going to be voting on. We're talking about the golf course. Correct. Right. Okay. Um, so we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna be presented with, with the various presentations, and we're going to vote at the gonna, end of that meeting. Correct. You're going to pick one. Oh, boy. 
Okay. Or, or I'm sorry, no, I apologize. No, the way that we decided was you would hear from all of them, That's you'd correct. have time to mull it over, yeah, and then we whatever. To have the time to look it over and figure it out. So. That's going to run the into meeting. the organizational meeting because remember the election is March fourteenth. Yeah, that's fine. It's going to be okay. We could do that. Everybody's okay. Can we get copies of the presentations prior to that meeting that we? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Cool. Thank you. All right. Okay. So Thank just you. so that I'm clear, um, we would we'll have this special meeting after everyone returns from Tallahassee. Yeah. Then so we have a meeting. I believe it's March sixth, and then the next one isn't till March thirtieth. Thirtieth. Organizational meeting is Thursday, March thirtieth. So is there a reason that we have to have it then, or could we do it the first meeting in the month that we're we're well, the having? first meeting is March sixth. No, 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 April, right after the organization. New commission, potentially. I mean, at least one member is going to be new, right? Yes. I know, but I mean, doesn't she's matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. No, this is the first time you don't want a workshop. Yeah, right. Well, I we've want been a workshop. Talking, we've been talking about workshops for six years. I'm, okay, uh, we can potentially but, but schedule two. There's going to be someone we sitting in this seat. Special meetings, if you wanted. Yeah, we could do that. Okay, so why don't we do that? We'll have a special meeting for the presentations, a yeah, special meeting for the awarded recommendation, and just for your own purposes. Because you're going to be more. No, you're going to know this more than anybody else. So right. it would be Correct. like starting so. someone else. First, I, I think we've done all this work. I think it should be the five of you, and then we move forward. Got it. The public meeting, just for everyone's um, knowledge, is March 2nd at 6 p.m. at the golf course, and that will be publicly noticed. And I'm going to make one other recommendation. If I don't, I'm going to knock on wood. If something happens and we have two new people, I think that we need to sh have to shove it off. Oh, no, it, we're going to have that meeting before these guys leave. Okay, never mind. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, I just I didn't want to end up in a situation where we have I see what you're saying. two new people and then right. we're the three that kind of know what's going on, right. but the other two have no idea. That's why I'm kind of trying yeah, to rush. I got it. Before. Got it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. It's getting late. I'm sorry. I know. Is that it? Yes. Okay. So let's. Oh, you're very welcome. Um, let's go and start on this end for any comments. Sure. I just I'm bringing up the same thing I keep bringing up, which is this money in the budget. I you know I called Julia. Because I honestly, I feel frustrated. I mean, I've got all these emails back and forth with you. Um, you indicated that the level of we're we're meeting our level of service. We have. We're talking about the fire. I apologize. I have not for the lack of clarity. Mm -hmm. I apologize. There's at, at a minimum two point five million dollars in that budget for these twenty two positions, which you knew on. When we implemented the budget, you will not be utilizing. At a minimum, you maybe would be utilizing 12 in July. And so here's the thing. It, 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 no matter how you do the math, right, 209,000 times the 10 months is 2,090,000. Then you add the extra, you know, 12 positions, you get to 2.5, or 12 months is 2.5. It becomes 2.2 if you do half the positions for, for July on. So I guess I'm very concerned. This is not transparent. I mean, we are, you put money in the budget allocated for a purpose that you know was not going to be utilized. And when the chief spoke on that, he said we would need to potentially, we use some for the Knox box. Which is okay, right? We agreed to that. But then there's talk of rolling it into overtime. And it concerns me if you, if we put it on a budget, you presented a budget, knowing that money was going to be utilized elsewhere for something else, even if it's within a department. And I don't think it's transparent. I, I don't think it's proper. And I, I'm concerned because your recent letter says you're going to pull out 425 thousand dollars well that doesn't account for the full amount of money where is the other money going and why from the beginning was it improperly allocated I have a big problem with this I have to tell you I'm very concerned like I said not transparent and not proper I spoke to the auditor and you know it's my position that that money should not we don't wait till mid-year and move it back it's a substantial amount of money it should go back and then be budgeted as it's supposed to be used as you intend it to be used, so the residents know what the money is being utilized for. Budgeting it on the front end for something that it wasn't going to be used for concerns me a lot. And, and this email concerns me more because you're only budgeting for a very small portion of it. And then you're talking about, yes, next year, 
we're not even there yet. And according to, you know, there's different ways to do the budget, but it seems like what you're doing, what we're doing, is you're taking the budget from this year, and next year you're just going to add to it a particular percentage. We should be zero-based budgeting, starting from scratch and working our way up, so that we are accountable to the residents. And I, I really, I want to see that money moved back out of the budget, an adjustment, and it, it should be properly allocated. And it's, it's like $2.5 million. We've talked, we keep going in circles, we keep throwing out Highland Beach, Highland Beach. This has nothing to do with Highland Beach. That contract doesn't come to renew till the next budget, not this one. So we have 22 positions sitting there and money for 22 positions that aren't being used for 22 positions that you knew weren't going to be used for 22 positions. And I, I, I think I deserve, we deserve an explanation, and the residents do. That is understandable. Of course. Um, you want that now? I mean, I'm just asking. I'm. I've been asking this for months, right. and if okay, you so check let's, my let's, emails, it's back and forth, back and forth. Well, I, I'm not checking your emails, but so my question to you is this: What do we do? Do you want do you want you're going to make you're going to ask for a consensus for us to yeah, have this move back? Is I that don't what you're think asking? we should wait till the mid-year budget if I am not here. Mm -hmm. This is this is not proper. Mm -hmm. This should be done. I'm I'm okay with that. I mean, if there is money in a, a, an account that is not intended for its use, it should not be in that account, and it should be moved back into the general fund, and then that general fund should be then supplying it as needed, and we should see each of those movements. Absolutely. Right, because it's what 100%. you're saying is then you don't have a realistic view of how that money is Correct. being utilized, and that's Creative not financing, proper. Deputy Vice Mayor. Pardon me? Creative financing. Okay. You'd just rather be in a situation, and this is taking it to the extreme with 22 positions, but you want to be in this situation where you're assuming that you are going to fill the roles. Because I've had this conversation when I, I first came on as a commission. There's a lot in the budget where we're going to assume that we are going to be able to fill those positions. We're going to assume that we are going to be able to get those materials, right? Because you'd rather adjust the positive way, the good way, than the other way and have to come ask for more money, right? But there's a limit to that. And we talked about that last time, mm -hmm. right? Because well, then you get to the point where it almost feels like the budget's you know, added. added. It's substantial. Um, if, we want, if you wanted to, I, I would join you if you want to bring back in, because this is such a large sum of money, the mid-year budget's not that far away, especially with we only have so many meetings to approve this transfer funds. But if we can do it a few meetings earlier than it would have been done with the mid-year budget, I'm in favor. Thank you. I, listen. I would do it now. I mean, Me just do it at the next meeting. Right. Why, why, why yeah. wait? Well, yeah, I didn't. Whatever I mean, because time. if we're doing we're doing adjustments all the time anyway. We kind of are. And I tend to believe it's much greater than this number that right. you gave. Thanks. May I have a yeah. May I have March six meeting to accomplish this? Because again, I mean, I, 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 as long as it's the same group up here, right? You know, because we know what's going on. So yes, ma'am. Yes, I I've had a conversation with Mr. Moore. I don't know if the other uh, four of you have that talks about his authority to move money within the right. different departments. I did, I, when are we going to talk about that? We do need Certainly. to discuss that procedure because that's exactly why this is problematic because then the money gets moved within the department. We don't even know. Close out the end of the year. and It's not, it's not a good look. Okay, but don't we have limitations on how much can be moved? Yes, we do. Within the department? We have a new budget policy. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it should probably just come before you for an next Correct. Budget. Okay. Sounds good. Do you have what you need? Thank you. I do. Okay. So formally, if I may, what we will accomplish March 6th then is not only the specific budget adjustment consideration, but also an explanation of the operational analysis associated with fire rescue. You all need to be aware of that as I've committed I will visit with you all individually to include members of the team so that we are clear and definitive in that regard. I'm happy to proceed accordingly in advance of the mid-year. Mm -hmm. However, this is a function of not only budget analysis, it's a function of contractual analysis, it's a function of operational analysis and other fields as well. So, yeah, But there's no welcome operational the or functional analysis with having um, uh, a designated $200,000 going into that on a monthly basis that is for positions that basically are not being filled. If I may, ladies and gentlemen, 
part of the review and the visually and March 6th we will have a transparent presentation accordingly Sounds to good. include the recommendations to make respective adjustments so that we are clear. Looking so I appreciate that direction. March 6th it is. Give me that opportunity and we will go forward. Vice Mayor. Thank you. First, Lynn, thank you for the special events policy. We all have it. Second, <laughs> Friday, uh, the mayor led a wonderful press conference to announce that Coco Golf <laughs> is coming Took April 14th. Sorry. That's all right. Give you credit for the wonderful yep. press conference. Yep. April 14th, 15th, uh, the Billie Jean, Jean Cup. King. Billie Jean? Sure. Billie Jean King yeah. Cup. That's right. It will be wonderful. Yep, she is playing. and. Try not to it will be wonderful. Um, by the way, it's the first time that they're actually going to be um, playing this uh, tournament in her name, and we are the city that is taking that in, so that's really exciting. It was the Fed Cup previous. And she may come and watch. You know, I have know. a funny feeling she's going to be here. <laughs> but I, we know Coco's going to be here. Yes, and we all will mm -hmm. enjoy. Um, I want to thank our police department and our police chief. I am very critical about the trucks on Atlantic Avenue, and I've seen an amazing increased Thanks. presence. So thank you for the directive. It's really made a difference. Um, OG, the gentleman's correct. I received many complaints. Um, I spoke to a, a restaurateur recently who says uh, Atlantic Avenue, after certain hours, turning into, quote, Bourbon Street. Mm. It's bad. Um, I know we've talked about the 1 a.m outdoor noise cut off, um, would there be consensus to start enforcing that? Oh, absolutely. Oh, Should be. Works. Yeah, I know. Absolutely. Okay. And He'll be on you. Yeah. Oh, listen, <laughs> yin and yang. That's right. He's, he's going to be on you. Is, on to the next thing. Isn't this No longer code? the trucks. Isn't this code? It's for yes. enforcement. Okay. It's Just wanted to make yeah, sure. It is. it is. It's not the police. It's the code enforcement the, where we Mr. Meet, uh, Mr. Um, Waltar is. Yes. Um, the sidewalk closed east of Lionfish okay. this weekend. I was out Saturday. Another thing I'm oh. crossing off. <laughs> they're, they're walking in the streets. Yeah. So we, 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 we spoke about that last yeah. last uh, meeting, and I said close the close those couple of side, I mean, um, what do you call them? Um, parking. Parking, parking spaces. Let them walk there. Put the barricades up. And we didn't do that? No. no. And they're now walking around the cars into the street yes. to get around. Why didn't we People do that? People are trying to. Uh, I would I would in, uh, conjecture that what we say up here doesn't get out there. Well, let's just ask the question: Why wasn't that done? I can't answer that. I can just report what I saw. No, he's asking. Well, asking. He's asking the city manager. How Aren't dangerous is it? No. That's who I'm asking. Mr. Moore. Mr. Moore. You're on the hot. Asking you. Yeah. Okay. Well, you should Wait, know. You I'm know. sorry. It why just, why did it? we not barricade off those few um, parking, you know, parking spots that were in front of Lionfish where they're doing the construction? Um, I know that Missy had kind of said, well, they're going to go all the way back behind the building and go all the way around. That's not happening. What they're doing is going out into the street, and they're interfacing with vehicles that are trying to park there and also vehicles that are driving by because they're not crossing the street. They're in that space. We need to barricade it off and let them walk there. There's we just we just had this ordinance or this um, proclamation about pedestrian safety. And there's signage that says they want the pedestrians go to the back side of the building. They're it's not going. Not, it's not happening. No. no, that was presented to us as a solution. We said that wasn't going to work. Yeah. It's not going to work. Right. So maybe something to change like right now, please. Yes. <laughs> Barricade it off, yes. let them walk around. Yes. And last, um, as I was going to the beach this weekend, I was approached by one of the restaurateurs who wanted to know who we could contact with the city because the city allows yoga on the beach and if we allow businesses to operate on the beach, um, he would like to sell food and some other activities. <laughs> so I contacted Lynn and Lynn said that something like that had to have city approval. And I guess they were contacted, the yoga people were contacted, yet they still live streamed their class yesterday and it's on the internet. I evidently, I, I wasn't following it because I was at the lovely hotel watching the debate. However, um, <laughs> You know, I, I, I don't know why businesses are connected. Well, it's, you know, they're, they're only ask, asking for 15 or $20 donations, but evidently there's other businesses that are interested. I think we have a, a nice, quiet beach, and we should Keep have it, that it remain way. that way. But It's actually not even city approval. It's city commission approval. So oh. they would have to come before you just like that gentleman did with the wakeboarding the, or whatever. Yeah. If they're charging. Yeah, well. No. I think or, not just whether they're charging or not. So if a group they of people want to go out to the beach and do, and do yoga and not charge, that's, well, no. They don't need permission. But this is a business. But if, it, if it's well, actually a commercial donation, that's a little. 
It, it had the makings of a commercial. We looked at it and it appeared like it was commercial. And so that's clearly you know, it requires um, commission approval. We'll reach out again and just let them know that the next time they'll be appearing before the right. special magistrate. And I hate to pile on, but I think or it's they on can the submit DA an application. Website, it shouldn't be. They can. They can. They it's can. On the, apply it's to on the what website? I'm sorry. I think it was promoted on the DDA website. But it is on the DDA website as an, an event where you can go out and, and do yoga in a group, or is it as a business? I Maybe. mean, okay. No, it's just a discussion. It I just want to make sure that when, when, when we have conversations with someone like that, obviously we don't want businesses running, but. That would be addressed because I received word about this over the last day myself. And as far as the barricade piece, I apologize. I was taking notes, so I misunderstood. So we will follow up with that regard beginning tomorrow as well. And only because. In the lionfish vicinity. Only because Ms. Cassell's making me do it. Um, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> The dogs are really a problem. And it, on the and, beach? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was one thing where they're just walking and doing whatever, but when the dog relieved itself in front of me and the yeah. owner just kicked sand over, <laughs> what was that? Um, that's an issue. And, it, you know, something to think about. <laughs> I have a meeting with the police chief about other issues. We'll add that to the list. That one's a little bit more complicated because, sure. you know, for code to get involved, you have to set a property owner. But can, it's, can yeah. I, let me ask you a question. Can we make the, instead of a ticket to go to court, make it a civil fine? So civil citations is an ongoing conversation. Okay. It's, it's very costly for the city to be able to do that. I didn't know. Okay. We would have to change our entire process and essentially have our officers sitting in court waiting to be called, like traffic court. So, you know, I've spoken to Chief Major about it. I know he, he has some interest in it. We'll, we'll discuss it. And if it's something that the commission wants to pursue and we can do it, there's a huge upfront cost to it. That's the concern. Um, and if, if the commission wants to do that, we'll have to rewrite the code again and, and add that provision in there. But it, it's, it's complicated. The way that we were doing it in the past was not legal. And if we had gotten challenged, we would have been in trouble. Mm. I don't want that. We don't but, want that. But great job with the trucks. Okay. May, may I just Chief say Major's that. on it, and, and we're going to have a conversation to see if there's anything we can do. I don't really think the commission's direction is going to be to arrest people. No, no, no. So, but we need. I don't know. We need to, we need to be a little bit. More. I don't I know. Mean, I, I don't know because do not want obviously to what we've tried to do <laughs> since I've been up here. This is one of the items that was being discussed I when I was inaugurated. <coughs> Commissioner me. Johnson, you're up. Thank you. I'm just continuing that one. Yep, get that um, list. No, nobody. It hasn't changed. It's only gotten worse. So what we've been doing isn't working. Now, do we need a code enforcer just to scroll up and down the beach, maybe two, and do something magical like this is your first warning, this is your second warning, that's $1,000. Dogs are not permitted on the beach. We have signs up. We have people calling us saying there's a dog, there's a dog. We have pictures. It's not going to end with what we've been doing. Definition of insanity keep doing the same thing, expecting a different results. That's all. Is that it? You're done? No. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll Sorry. try to do my best. Um, some of this has been taken up, so I won't be too long. It's a book. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Back and forth. Number one, I'd like to commend Mr. Russ Major. Uh, as you're all aware of the tragic death of Mr. Tyree uh, Nichols, um, it precipitated a concern in the community that we might have that same kind type of policing. And the Alpha Phi Alpha South County chapter invited our illustrious police chief, Russ Major, to a community town hall meeting at the Greater Mount Olive Baptist Church last Thursday evening. And Chief Major was exemplary in his presentation, his ability to connect with the audience, and his all around, I wrote it down, Russ, authority, clarity, and assurance that this is Delray Beach, and he and his officers are here to a different standard of community policing. I was proud of the chief and his entourage that he had in the church with him, and um, proud of the hardworking, all of the hardworking members of this police department. I could go on, but uh, we'll end with the thank you, Russ, and the police department. Now, um, I think we're ahead of the game because of what happened to us in 2005, and I'm sure it started from there. We've been there. We're not going down that path. 
and he was insistent that they're always monitoring what's going on with their various police officers on any one day any of those officers who are under a tremendous amount of stress one minute you're calmly driving down the street and the next you're answering some shooting whatever and somebody's coming off of I-95 onto uh, Atlantic Avenue with an AKA 40 whatever so I'm I, it's it's a stressful job so thank you thank you all uh, that was number one number one a congratulations to Chief Tommy I understand that you have attained some county You'll have to tell us. I don't know if it's allowed that he can shout it out. Yay. Congratulations. Don't have enough of that. Um, we're having a diabetes event on the 20. Oh, I hope it's. Ugh, I let it die. The 21st? Yes. The 21st of a Tuesday, February 21st, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., Palm Beach County at Pompey Park, Palm Beach County, uh, Pompey Park Free Diabetes Screening Event. There is a new foundation called the HATT, H-A-T-T -T Foundation. The, it's going to be their objective to root it out. Diabetes is killing people in the underserved communities. I say it's killing people throughout all of our communities. So if you know of anyone or you yourself suspect that you're a diabetic and you don't think your doctor's paying attention to it, I encourage you to come out and uh, get your screening. And there's some wonderful things that are going to happen in the future. And if you're diabetic now, be aware. It's going to be a lot easier. It'll be easier not to be, but if you can't, then... There are going to be tools and things that are coming down the pike. I'd like to get consensus number three. I'd like to get consensus from the board for an honorarium of some type, uh, not the kind that we bring people in to take pictures, but there's another one that um, Ms. Johnson can probably help me with. It's not quite a proclamation. It's a something. Letter of, um, rec letter of recognition. Letter of recognition. I'd like to have that done for the Church of the Palms. Don't know if any of you have been affected, and hope you haven't been, but that church actually opened up its doors when there was no other place to go. When we shut down in 2020 due to COVID crisis, they opened their doors when there were deaths, and the funeral homes had no place to conduct conduct the funerals. They've been most wonderful. I'm okay with it. Are you guys okay with it? Okay. Sure. Good okay. enough. Thank you. I don't have to tell you. you. Okay. Um, Mr. Moore did the private request requests for uh, events. League of Cities, please take out your calendars. If you haven't, February the 22nd is our Delray Beach presentation of the League of Cities. I ask that you please try and make yourselves available at uh, noon. Yeah. It's only an hour, and uh, we want to make a good showing. Can, can I ask you? I, I have there's a groundbreaking. Yeah, there's a groundbreaking, right? Yeah, well, that's before cutoff. But is, yeah. it, is it an hour or is it 11.30 or 1.30? It's, it's 11 12 30. until 1. Okay. Yeah. I have 11. I, I have 11. The, the Delray Beach hosting 11.30 to 1.30 okay. is what I have. So Yeah, yeah they do arrive, but it's about 12. Yeah. Okay. So please. It can be late, in other words. Yeah, you can. We'll, we'll hold a plate for you. Um, I'd like a status somewhere sometime, not necessarily tonight, one of my physicians was asking about the $19 million that we received for the Tropic Owls Road. And I'm sure we could get an update, but uh, again, the hour's late. From some future meeting, I may not be here, but uh, I think the community at Tropic Owls is expecting something to start happening at some time or another, and I don't <clears throat> know how long it's been since we talked about it. Madam Mayor, if I may? Yep. So, briefly. Briefly, very briefly, of course. <laughs> You know, I, I could tell you, just let everybody know, we've been here since three, 2 o'clock? 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock, okay. So we're, we're just, we're spent. It's six hours. Yeah, we actually, briefly, we actually met Missy, myself, others, police chief. We actually visited with the Tropic Isle Civic Association last Wednesday in the evening, and we talked extensively about this particular item at that time. So I just wanted to share that. But we will, if I may. In addition to that, we will come back before the commission with specific recommendations and updates. But that's been initiated. Right, so let's go. Very good. Thank you. Just trying to bring it out of the shadows. Um, 
For those of you who are not aware, we have another series of authors speak, and they're very informative, and I encourage everyone is being sponsored by the CRA. It, the first one's February 23rd, the next April 27th, and then June 15th. Uh, legal city status remain That's it. No, Thank you. Commissioner Bolson. I like your new strategy, how you have one and then one A. Yes. <laughs> you know that counts as two. Yes, it right? does. You can just I, go I guess, to right number I know, two. I know, I just want to say. Yeah. yeah that, and that's being creative. The only, the only thing I wanted to say um, is that if you haven't seen the frequently asked questions that were added to the Geo Bond page, um, thank you, Gina, for sending that link. Um, get it out to as many people as possible. It really addresses the, really, it is the frequently asked questions. And as soon as people read the answers, they're all, they're all positive and aligned with their expectations. Um, they are, you know, in favor of obviously something very important to all of us. Okay, so something that comes up. I've been told today that Ms. Carter is our guest speaker at the League of Cities luncheon. Very good. Nice. Well, all the more reason to go. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, real quick, uh, gas-powered leaf blowers, I'm still getting comments about that. Um, it's something we can bring up at another time, but if we're in that idea of maybe we want to go into something that's a little bit quieter, it's, it's an idea that we could possibly uh, pursue uh, if, if it's allowed. Second thing, no meeting next week because we've got the Delray Beach open, Yay. so I just want to make sure everybody knows. Hope to leave see you there. And I just want to say one one more thing to one of my colleagues up here. Thank you, um, Vice Mayor, for expressing your mind yes. and um, in a very professional and a very civil way. I think that you know you had a, a, a legitimate concern. We all, those of us that saw that meeting, felt the same way, mm -hmm. but it was done tactfully, and I appreciate that. Thank so you. I just wanted to say thank you for that.